Eko nene. Eko nene. Episode 259 tukisema like, subscribe, hit the notification button, tell a friend to tell a friend, ndio? Yeah. Yeah, na vile muambiaga jo mwaga <laughs> niko kwa internet na for rage and I for rage <laughs> for information. Na kaka kuna mse moja nilifinding super interesting ni mse tuko na yeye saa hizi. Ah uh, yeah, mostly obonga gaji ya financial literacy na pia unaweza consult na yeye even on a personal level uh, about financial literacy. Mm-hmm. Sema nyenye na bonga jo yake anaitwa Steve Steve Kahome. Yeah, cuz uh, mostly the first time niki uh, bonga jako i think ngonaambia either rap to ngonaambia hey, kuna mse flani jo naitwa wahome wakamkali mm. nini kaka ni kanotis ni k k yeah ni aje ni aje steve niko poa sana yeah eh yeah. kwa hii industry ya history ya financial literacy ulijipata gaji and nasema ile za tu kama like an interest that i had picked yeah yeah so i was just looking for information about Mm. I can start investing. Okay, you know, okay. Just try, trying to learn about financial markets. Okay. So let's go to a group now. I said to challenge. Okay, let's try and learn this thing. Yeah. And whatever information you can gather from any sources you can share with us then we can discuss. Okay. Then after a few weeks nika jipata eh nika ni mipe yangu na contribute kwa hii discussion. Mm. Alafu mm. wasi nika contribute sana. Yeah. So it's like ah why can't we live in a in a closed group mm. and i can just share my thoughts in the internet or what i've learned in the internet oh, okay. and even other guys can mm. come to the conversation and contribute mm. you know one day even if you are wrong about something on the internet the guys will come and say okay it's not like that it's this yeah. way yeah. yeah so in an open forum like maybe in social media maybe on twitter mm. the guys who are willing to jump on the conversation and keep the conversation going yeah yeah so that's how i started mm. that's something that i was picking an interest on okay yeah then I don't know if it's by coincidence or by luck. Mm. I I came to maybe learn about a lot of things because yeah, I was yeah. I was trying to to learn about all angles of mm. the financial markets, yeah, yeah. about financial literacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then after some time I even discovered the, okay there is maybe a career that I can even oh, okay. can even start a career mm. finance. So I started looking okay what mm. certifications can I take? How can I be a certified maybe financial advisor? Oh, okay. How can I work with companies? How, how can I work with asset management companies mm. to help people to manage their wealth and also mm. learn more about financial literacy? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So like uh where did you get your certification? Okay, so so far I've done CC. It's a Chartered Institute of Securities Investment. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I'm also planning to do my CFA mm. and become a charter holder. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh like why why was that interest there because I feel like financial literacy is one of those things where we all think we are financially literate. Ah, si tunajua mimi najua do. Una ni tunafunza ni juu ya do. But a lot of us are financially literate. Like tukipata do kidogo eh ni vile tu lazima ile ile nini ya major ni lazima nta inakuwa ni lazima nta washo eh lazima utatese lazima ajue eh lazima ajue eh lazima ajue that's such kwa financial literacy ni lazima ajue as long as i'm doing well mhm haijalishi si nime move out nilikuwa naishi ghetto sasa hizi naishi lovington au unaona nakupigia picha nikienda kwa club na kupigia receipt i'm doing well that means i'm financially literate so why did you feel like people need more information okay first okay when you look at some asana there's there are a lot of things that you, you you tend to think differently from most people yeah, if you're yeah. exposed to some information maybe, or maybe to some level of knowledge that is not maybe the conventional knowledge yeah, yeah. so like i think taking coming from that background of maybe reading a lot and maybe just doing my own research mm. i came to find okay yeah, these guys are doing this way but i don't think supposed to be that way. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you think when you take when you learn about something and you maybe you, you come across maybe a topic like real estate maybe land investing mm-hmm. and you just try and ask yourself why are these guys why is everyone talking about land mm-hmm. then you try to 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 think from first principles and and you come and realize that these guys are just not maybe whatever they're trying to get from land yeah. is just something that has been that has been injected in them maybe from uh, uh, bringing maybe from our parents mm-hmm. that is not something that makes even a lot of financial sense yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay cuz uh, one of the things kabla even to dig deep one of the things that i like about uh, th- when you are writing about finances kuna kwa kana this one thing that you always put at the end yeah enjoy your money cuz i think like sometimes we forget that mm-hmm. life tomorrow is not guaranteed so of course enjoy your money but now i think even before to ingia kabisa um i want to look at it this way a young person who's starting out uh, salary around 30000 shillings is there room for investment i think there is yeah okay but there, there's always one thing that i've always and this is the most this is like the most powerful 
powerful thing or maybe the f- most powerful factor that I've always thought about when it comes to investing for young people yeah, is yeah. that the most or maybe the most important investment you can make is investing in yourself yeah because if you look if you look at the lifespan of a young person most mm. if, you are, if you are in your 20s you're mm. just you're just getting started with your career right yeah. so there's a very uh, there's a very huge chance that you are in your earning potential mm. will increase with time yeah if you look at the careers of most people what you're earning in your 20s is what, is that what you'll be earning in your 40s or maybe in your 50s yeah yeah, yeah you will scale the career the career the career ladder mm. you'll get more experienced will maybe upgrade maybe further your studies yeah mm-hmm. so automatically you are more likely to to command a higher income as mm. you age mm. so that's i think that's the most important thing that young as young people we should realize that the, the biggest investment that you can make is investing in ourselves that we should always look for ways that you can increase mm. our earning potential that's furthering our studies yeah. learning an extra skill mm. whether it's you know getting that job experience or maybe that the required experience for you maybe to do to to to, to, to maybe command that uh, yeah. Uh, income yeah yeah but regardless of any amount that you have mm. i think if if you have uh, there's always some level of investment that you can make yeah. whether it's okay. 30,000 or it's 40,000 10,000 Mm. and also that the habit of you know cultivating the habit of you know saving money and investing money from just whatever little that you have mm. i think it will be very much easier to carry forward that because mm-hmm. if you are managing if you are if if you if can if you can be trusted with little then you can be trusted with much you know that's a big old verse yeah, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and uh, so nene because i think like one of the main things that young kenyans do and this is to show that we are successful mm-hmm. is buying a car Mm-hmm. and uh, by that i mean like in my 20s as soon as i made some little money in land up nagari mm-hmm. i think at some point i had three cars which is very stupid uh two as as in uh, as an investment but then i came came to find out cars are not the best <laughs> form of investment <laughs> mm-hmm. but eh hey, history agari do you feel like there's a cure to it because i feel like kenyan so feel kama sina gari i'm not successful i'm not successful uh What do you think Ama, what do you feel about that? I think it depends with how you look you look at it mm. and also your level of where the well then also your financial goals. Mm. Yeah, mm. Because I think there's some okay depending on how much you spend maybe whatever amount. Na bonga jo wa Kenya wana make 100k kwenda chini. Kwenda chini. Yes. Net even net. Let me even put it at net. 100,000 net kwenda chini. You'll find we are just obsessed na gari. Like tuna feel like ah nikisho hapa hapa na cab watu watachukua sina heshima nikisho hapa hapa na kana na matri hapo ah, watanisikiza nikisho hapa na ndudi ai atafukuzwa <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah so i think one thing one thing comes from i think from a bit of financial illiteracy because mm. okay if you look at most people who take car loans mm. watu wengi wako wengi wameangalia the other factors that come with car loans because if you are talking about 100k net Yeah that's the the gross uh, that's that you talked about not gross 100k net yeah, yeah okay yes if you are maybe in your advanced years maybe you have accumulated a bit a, a little bit of wealth maybe you can maybe save up cash maybe mm. buy your car cash yeah but if you are talking about most people maybe who, are, who have maybe just started their careers they don't have a lot of savings and investments mm. so most guys are going to be to be buying their cars through car financing maybe taking a loan or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think one of the things that most people never never consider when taking loans to buy cars is the extra cost maybe the hidden cost that comes with with purchase, purchasing a car yeah because okay you have you have gotten a car maybe a car loan to buy a car so one thing you have to to don't notice is that you'll be paying your car loan that's mm. the first expense yeah. the second expense is fuel expenses mm. you have servicing and maintenance yeah. another hidden cost like you know parking fees mm. yeah maybe you can see nowadays we have it here Mm. We are you you are using the 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 express where you have to pay some charges yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. there are a lot of hidden costs you know mm-hmm. with a car you can get an emergency anytime maybe someone has hit your side mirror yeah, yeah yeah so if you can if you can if you can accumulate or if you can bring up all those expenses that come maybe from car finance maybe owning a car from a loan i think if you do the maths for most mm. people to not to not add up and that's why you'll see that most people yes you have a car but Mm. maybe you don't use it as often because your budget is over overstretched mm. mm. and then also if anything happened maybe you lost your job maybe you lost so your secondary source of income mm. then that means maybe you will your car may be auctioned by by the bank or it may be repossessed by the bank because now you are unable to pay for your yeah for yeah your loan yeah. and i think also the other thing that you have talked about is that we want to live large we want to show people yeah, how I'm much money, how much money we have mm. i think mm. there is 
there's a quote where by Morgan Lazar who is the writer of the author of the, 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 the psychology of money mm. where he says that the singer Rihanna once sued a financial advisor mm. and then the the financial advisor told him that you know that when you buy when you buy things you mm. end up with the things but not your money Eh, oh, eh. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so, so, so I think uh, that, that trade, eh? yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think that, that, that's what applies because well, there's the accumulation yeah. of savings, so income mm. not spent. Mm. So if you if you if you end up using your uh, if you if you end up buying things, you end up with the things, yeah, and not but not the, not money. the money, yeah. Okay, and a lot of us want to have our cake and eat it, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah and then yeah. and then also I think also and the. Uh, on that part Morgan also says that, that most people get the wrong idea of, of what it means to become a millionaire yeah because yeah. most people assume that that being a millionaire is mm. spending a million dollars but mm. it's actually the opposite it's saving a million mm. dollars and still living ile million ni kama iko untouched it's not about spending the million dollars yeah, yeah. it's about saving the million dollars mm. yeah so the, okay. there's also that uh ile tuki convert in kenyan shillings ni that's 60000 eh you have 60000 spend yeah tuko <laughs> uko mbali sana na nini so yeah. um so nataka tu bonge juu ya vitu kadhaa um zile wao bonga juu yake mm-hmm. you like talking about investing eh mm-hmm. and um but uh, normally i look at maybe the things you talk about and i'm like is it vitu how does just a normal kenyan just decide you know let me invest in this because let's get this out of the way mm-hmm. the number one way of investing in kenya in akwaga land real estate i think there is even a famous saying in kenya you can never go wrong with real estate how true is that statement i think it's very untrue if you mm. ask how many people right now have pieces of land and they're looking to sell them and they actually can't get buyers Mm. you'll find quite a few yeah then if you also ask how many people bought land are, are now dealing with court cases yeah you'll find quite a lot of people mm. Mm. and then if you if you if you if you if you look around and find how many how many land scandals and scams have been there in the country in the last maybe few years mm. there are quite many yeah yeah so i think the the idea about investing in land maybe has been carried 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 forward from our parents because mm. i think mm. you know investing land is easy because you can see you can see the land it's something tangible yeah, yeah. you have your title lead you can tell people okay i own this piece of land it's 50 mm. by 100 mm. in mm. kamulu joska yeah it's something t- tangible yeah, but yeah. now if you tell someone that okay i have i, I invest maybe my money in a money market fund maybe mm. i own stocks you know the, the, only, the, the only close the, the only tangible thing you have Maybe mm. it's your brokerage account or maybe you can open and <laughs> yeah, show guys yeah, okay yeah. I own up mm. like, maybe I own Safari come on this uh, this number of shares of this mm. it's not something mm. tangible it's not, it's not something that most people have not been taught yeah yeah that's when our financial interest comes in so mm. we have been raised up knowing that okay land is and real estate is yeah. one of the major investments and mm. also if you look at our our media radio stations and our tv stations mm. a lot of adverts Mm. are about land just yeah. listen to your local radio station mm. and after every few minutes there's an advert about land in some place mm. yeah so i think people are fed about this idea about land 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 real estate mm. and if you look at the other ideas of maybe investing in the stock market in money market in money market, in money market funds yes in just bonds it's not in the in the, in the public domain or maybe in the public media as often as we see mm. the other adverts on land and real estate oh, okay okay yeah. alafu um The, the question then would be like uh okay there's another thing i always say mm. that with a certain level of wealth even renting is not a bad thing mm-hmm. but what do you think about rent is rent always bad cuz muske gaat wa kisema ai but don't live rent no gonna doka hai ah mi sezi live rent can go doka hai is rent that bad Okay I think it depends from your personal perspective yeah, because yeah. your personal finance is very personal you know mm. something there's there's something that maybe we can all afford mm. but maybe I may not want it as much as you do maybe it's not a priority to, a priority for me yeah, I think yeah. that's one of the things that we I always advocate for which is con- conscious spending mm. which is an idea that was that was written by Ramit Sethi yeah, in, yeah. in his book yeah mm. so he talks about that you know he had a friend mm. who got a promotion and he moved out to a smaller apartment yeah oh, okay. yeah because for him mm. he says that you know going biking and hiking was more important for him so for him when he got the promotion mm. he wanted to have more money to spend in his outdoor activities oh okay and mm. he did, and he realized that maybe his his rent was eating much of his income and he wanted mm. to save mm. more for his hiking activities and still live within his his budget mm. so that's what we call 
that's that's maybe an, one example but again like i said personal finance is very personal yeah, yeah yeah even if we have the same level of wealth or maybe different levels of wealth there's what's more important to you mm. the ho- there's what's more important to me and we'll always be different you have different opinions you have different perspectives about life you have different tastes and preferences mm. so i think mm. that's 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 different yeah but from a from a financial from a financial literacy point of view maybe yeah. from a financial analysis point of view mm. i can say that if you ha- if you have maybe if maybe maybe you have cash here and you what maybe to spend in buying a house cash yeah there are a lot of options that maybe will be more financially literate mm. than maybe buying the house cash because yeah. you know let's let's assume you are buying this is just an assumption you want to buy a house that maybe worth maybe a million let's just use basic mm. math that will be easier to, to do the calculations with. yes 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 yeah so you have you have a, you have a few, you have a few options so it's either you can buy the house in cash you spend your 1 million and the next day you don't have it but you have the house yeah. the another thing is that okay you can invest the money mm. maybe in in any investment asset class maybe you can talk about share bonds that are fetching quite high returns right now returns of more than 18% yeah yeah so basic math i think that will come to around 180,000 per mm. year mm. so twice per year you have your 95,000 mm. so and you still have your 1 million with you yeah yeah so you can you can mm. you can you can decide okay me i don't want to own the house mm. i still want to live off my investments yeah, yeah. maybe i want to, to still have my cash and you know with your cash if you can maybe accumulate more more cash mm. maybe add to the 1 million you can still get to a point where you can maybe even meet your expenses of your returns yeah. from your investments yeah so i think mathematically maybe from a financial from a financial point of view mm. it's possible it's possible to to be to make the decision that okay i'm okay with renting you don't have to own a home or be a house yeah. because okay this doesn't add up for me okay yeah but past a certain level of wealth mm. there are people who don't just care about okay i don't not maybe they not that they don't care mm. but they're not consta- concerned mm. you know how maybe let's t- let's say today maybe someone borrowed you a thousand and you just yeah. lend them yeah maybe you'll feel a pinch of mm. okay, hey i've just lent that guy a thousand but maybe some yeah. someone someone's someone at another person's level maybe it's 100000 mm. someone uh, someone asked me for 100000 i give them okay i'll fill up in check okay, yeah i just yeah, lost 100000 yeah. yeah. but maybe f- past a certain level of wealth mm. you can afford anything you can afford to splash money on anything yes. so even if you went and bought a house you are mm. st- still not a, a huge percentage of what you what yeah. of your wealth mm. so it still mm. doesn't concern you that much mm. yeah no, okay cuz uh, so wewe tuseme unatembea pale one a rental apartment and you see someone with a Range Rover what do you think do you think they don't know what they're doing no like what comes to mind let's say you don't know nothing about them but mm-hmm. when eh who's so renty kid and a drive range <laughs> so i think there's there's obviously the conventional wisdom yeah. or maybe what we call status status mm-hmm. symbols of people you know we are human beings we're always chasing status yeah. and yeah. we're always playing status games so there's how we want other people to see to see mm. us there's, mm. there's mm. how we want to appear mm. in public spaces so maybe the common person you know speaking from the layman's terms yeah. maybe from the common person's understanding yeah. he may think that that decision is very stupid but maybe in the back of in the back of the mind of that guy mm. maybe he he has made several investments that he's able to to maintain his lifestyle well and maybe even he's paying off mm. the rent of that house Mm. from the returns of, of investments that that he has made yeah. also maybe he has some financial understanding that that he has he has organized his life in a certain way that we cannot understand from from an outsider's point of view yeah okay yeah. okay so um there's this like i was saying there's this thread you did about uh financial investments <laughs> and i remember you said that the best one is the the money market fund MMF you put it as number one. I don't know if you put put them in orders mm-hmm. but ukona sema it's low risk uh so yes uh, let's start with that MMF ni money market fund yeah. yes why is it a good uh, investment okay maybe just a point of correction mm. first of all okay it's not the number one investment but i think yeah. it's the it's a starting level yeah yeah oh, it's, it's like the baby class of investing mm. yeah maybe the pp1 of investing oh the pp1 it's like the first step of investing yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. you know the first step to investing is saving okay it's earning money and yeah. saving money because you cannot invest money that have not saved because yeah. yeah. you know savings is the difference between your income and mm. expenditure so the first mm. step is savings yeah. and yeah. if you look at how many, how people save money or how the common person goes about savings mm. most people just save their money in bank accounts mm. yeah, but your money is earning 
there are some bank accounts that even give you will give you one maybe 1% less than yeah. 3% per annum yeah. Yeah. which is yeah. very low because mm-hmm. these banks are using your deposits to mm-hmm. lend money to businesses and to other individuals mm-hmm. and right now the, the lending rates are as high as 16 17 21% oh, okay. so you can imagine these businesses these banks are making 21% they're giving maybe 3% or less yeah, yeah. which is very unfair mm-hmm. yeah because if you knew better you could do better mm-hmm. so the basic of a money market fund just like a saving account mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just it's just a pooled okay so maybe just to explain what a money market fund is mm. it's just a pooled investment firm or maybe mm. a, what you call a, a mutual fund yeah. whereby different investors bring their money together and then they give that money to a fund manager mm. then the fund manager is this professional who looks at what asset classes can invest in this money mm. so that they can give the investors a return yeah i know in the case of money market my money market fund this fund manager as regulated by cma has to invest in low risk avenues mm. this include treasury bills treasury bonds yeah we also have fixed deposits called deposits demand deposits such mm. kind of mm. such kind of investments mm. and the good thing now about a money, mar- a money market fund is that your savings will get a, a decent return on on investment yeah yeah because now right now my market funds are giving maybe from 12 to 16 percent mm. compared that we are three percent that's a huge difference okay you know the first step to investing is to beat the inflation the inflation mm. rate yeah. so inflation rate in Kenya is, it's about it's between 5% 7.5% 7. so your savings account there's no day, there's no way to ever beat yeah the inflation okay. rate but now with the money market fund you are doing it very easily mm. it's very low risk mm. you can easily access your money within two days of asking so i think it's the first step to invest in. you have to accumulate your savings in a decent place Okay. Yeah. But sasa swali ni hii money market fund naipanda mm. naipata wapi? Cuz sasa hiyo ndio swali watu jiuliza. Kwa I think Safaricom has Mali, is it Mali? Yeah, Safaricom has Mali which so, has okay, mm. I'm not sure if they they, they there's a time when they launched mm. they were accepting investors I think to up to a certain level then they then they what do you call it? Then they stopped accepting investors. But I'm not sure if they have resumed but we have mm. Mm. quite a couple of options i think we have 25 fund managers in the country right now okay and they are all offering money market funds yeah uh, 25 25 fund managers yeah oh, and they are okay. all offering money market funds ni kama ni kama gani na mtu anazipataje kwa phone cuz hiyo ndio kitu niko sure sasa ataniuliza okay so kitu kayo napataje kwa simu yeah, so maybe there are some like say which is the largest mm. which is the largest in trust in kenya with a market share of more than 30% they are called CIC 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 That's no CSC CSC asset management and under CSC oh, group. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And we have Sunlam, we have others like Kuza. Even mm. nowadays most banks are mm. entering into asset management so they also, they also have many market funds. Mm. But mm. maybe they aren't as big as what asset management asset management companies are, are oh, doing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So <coughs> so that's the nene because I think even one of those things you said was very interesting where you're yeah. saying like their returns were between 18 to 21%. No, between 12 to 16%. Or 12 right to 16%. Now, right now, yeah. Cuz let's go let's do like some we will go some yeah. basic mathematics like mm-hmm. very quick eh? mm-hmm. um right now if you were to guess how much is a three bedroom apartment in langata <laughs> three bedroom yeah in langata yes apartment yeah buying mm. if you're buying cash cash mm. Mm. Well, let's say you have to make a wild guess 20m 20m mm. Mm. so let's look at is it this lo- too low to live I used to live in an apartment mm-hmm. in yeah, Langata mm-hmm. and it was a three bedroom mm-hmm. and I used to pay 30,000 as my rent. Mm-hmm. So 30,000 if I take this 30,000 times uh, 12 that's 360,000. That yeah. times 12. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. 360,000. Mm-hmm. 360,000 if I'm to then divide it by 20 million if this person bought this for 20 million You see now we are talking about uh is it is it 1.8% uh? maybe you could have used 500,000 yes yeah 20 million that's yes if we are if it's 500,000 uh f- 500 okay what at once and okay so 20 million 500,000 yes yeah. that's 2.5% ama uh? 2.5% yeah <laughs> yeah so that means the whole year mm-hmm. home to he pesaki collect na natengeza 2.5% unless mm. ni fanyo calculation wrongly ama 
maybe we can we can look okay what are we what are we fanye like tuto zero tatu so easy zero tatu tuto zero tatu sindio so tulikuwa na 500 so tumebaki na 500 over 20000 sindio Mm-hmm. then trace is 0.2 trace 0.2 so back in a 5 over 200 yeah. mm-hmm. which is 2.5%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So unaona when you tell this person that this house is not a good investment the fact that you are going to rent it out mm-hmm. and don't forget rent is never guaranteed the tenant can end up in problems. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. pesa yako imepotea. Okay so mm. if you look at the real estate market in Kenya I yeah. think one of the main reasons I've been trying to say it's over hype so maybe it's not a good investment is one it's in terms of the returns because yeah. I think I think we even had a Twitter space sometimes late last year with with some real estate experts one of Steve Kipchumba the other one was Nahash Nokawa who are very trusted mm. real estate experts in the country mm. and one thing that we we all agreed on or maybe one of, one of one of my pointers that real estate is overpriced is that you can hardly get a real estate project giving you not of more than 10% in returns yeah, yeah, even yeah. 8% mm. it's a lot mm, most mm. real estate projects will give you between 6 to 8% yeah Yeah and if you look at the other asset classes that we have in the market even a money market fund that is giving you 12% mm. t t bonds are giving you 18 19% mm. and then stocks maybe in the long run can give you even higher returns than that yeah, yeah yeah so okay yes they always say that there's also the aspect of capital appreciation mm-hmm. also you know you attach the capital appreciation with the rental income yeah, yeah. because you know if your house maybe if you bought the house today at 20 million mm. maybe in the next five years the house will be worth maybe 25 million mm. yeah, so maybe there's that aspect of capital appreciation But who will you sell it added <laughs> with the with the rental returns yeah, yeah. but what because if there's a ready market for the house mm-hmm. maybe Yeah. And also that's mm. theoretical because you always assume that maybe the time you are selling mm. that maybe that house will be worth more than mm. it's worth right now yeah, but if yeah. if you have I think it was I think I'm not sure if it, I think they have seen a report here by land prices or even house prices have gone down yeah, yeah so it, it happens especially. it can happen mm. yeah so there's also that mm. that factor and also the other thing about real estate by the way and land is that most people don't buy these houses cash Mm. they take bank loans yeah. to finance you know real estate projects mm. yeah and, and the bank loans you can imagine 20 25% yeah now so you can imagine now you're rates, eh? now, now you now you imagine you can let's take let's take a case of you maybe you have 10 million cash right now mm. you are looking at the investment options that you may have yeah. so you may find maybe someone saying okay i have 10 million right now maybe i can build some real estate property maybe with 20m mm. that maybe i can you know that's your understanding that's your knowledge that's your level of financial literacy yeah mm. the only thing you are eyeing on is real estate yeah yeah so you have not considered the investment options so you'll end up taking an extra 10 million loan and at very crazy rates yeah unless it's maybe from a circle that maybe has maybe lower rates or even 12 percent it's still okay it's still high mm. assuming because the returns from real estate may not surpass that 12 percent yeah so you can see yourself now you'll find okay i i, I think i've even shared cases of this where, where clients come and tell me okay it's not that i'm struggling financially mm. but i brought these problems to myself yeah. by maybe taking on a real estate project that i never had the cash to finance so i had mm. to go to to the bank for a loan mm. and now you are living comfortably but now you you, you bring this comfort in your life because now you have you have to meet you, you are, yes you have a real estate property yeah yeah and now you have to look at the To, you, yes you have already even finished it but now you have to look at the occupancy rates mm-hmm. so if you look at most real estate ha- projects the occupancy rates okay there are some with 100% but 100% yeah, yeah. it's very it's very it's, hard it's, it's not yeah, normal yeah, yeah. Yeah, most are at 60 maybe 70% also maybe uh, depending so, on location i think the ones that are 100% are where the 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 rates are below the market rate i'm a, you understand like the rent is not super expensive yeah and also and mm. also and also Pia, there's also a factor of brand there are some real estate developers who have, who have got very good names out here yeah. so whenever they put up a project they they always get clients fast enough even before maybe they have come, even finished the the mm. developing stage but what i was just trying to say is if you look at the returns okay i was talking about the the point where by this client is bringing some discomfort to his life because now you have to yeah you have now you have extra headaches now yeah, you yeah. have the bank loan that's struggling mm. you're struggling to pay and now yeah. the bank loan depends on the occupancy mm. or maybe the rental income you're getting from this real estate project but now there are no clients yeah and also some clients don't pay on time mm. and also there are some repairs and maintenance that we'll have to do Okay mm. some will say that some some repairs clients will pay but okay what about the sewage that blocks mm. who will pay for that who will mm. pay for that 
yeah, maybe security and all those other expenses that come with it. So I think for me, okay, we always say personal finance is very personal, mm-hmm. but for me, I've always found real estate to have a lot of headaches for me. Mm-hmm. Well, even if you can, oh yes, you can outsource the headaches. Yeah. But okay, why then go for the low returns? Mm. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. uh, Sunday is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, Sunday you can enter home na you know, a distant cousin of mine. Mm-hmm. Na you was akacheki. Kwetu na Josasa Kabete is now opening up. Sa hii ni kama ni the congestion plan ya Nairobi County. Mm-hmm. So na pata wasi wengi wanajenga these flats na nini. Wale wasi wako na shamba zao. So na pata for them to kujenga kitu ina attract. You know, guys living middle class. To say middle class. Mm-hmm. Una spend around 100 to 150 million on a flat. Mm-hmm. And then average rent yeah your area for two bedroom it's like 30k mm. so um say eh ile do ataka how how long do you answer kurudisha yeah it's it's ridiculous All this money. Yeah. it's uh, yeah so yeah. kuna hiyo fascination yeah, but, but i think uko. maybe atangalia yo yo can 30000 volume like how many flats does he have up no, some some you know? but like i don't know 15 20 Yeah so maybe atangalia hivyo mm, yeah. let's say it's 15 that's 450k mm-hmm. alafu maybe anaangalia in one year that's 9m yeah so na chukua 20 years amerudisha <laughs> yeah, at least <laughs> yeah. now so you fully to be like unless sasa mm. anaingia hapo tuseme if kama anaingia kwa project kama hiyo hiyo si yango never enjoy that the returns mm. maybe my my kids Yeah yeah, yeah 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 actually most people say that you know real estate is a long it's a long term project it's a long term mm. game that's when you maybe you'll see the the real returns mm. yeah and so they also say that you know it's the it's the best form of passing on wealth maybe to your kids to, your kids, yeah. to the next generation mm. Mm. yeah because you know real estate it's a 30 years project yeah 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 so, okay. mm. so it makes okay. sense in a in a, in a long term perspective maybe yeah, a yeah. long term view but for the average person if you are looking maybe to build your wealth Mm. Most if you are focused on returns, mm. I don't think real estate is the place to be. There are so many asset classes that can give you better returns and mm. lower stress levels okay. than even that real estate. Because now you can imagine now you have to deal with clients who are late to parent, you have to deal with repairs, you have to deal with a lot of things. Mm. But now if you just bought maybe a government bond, yes, guys are saying that you know the government has a likelihood of default yeah, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, more yeah. so recently, mm, mm. but bonds have been relatively low risk from from many years back was okay our government of Kenya has never defaulted mm. it's not like governments of other countries who are known for defaults like Argentina mm. and other and other countries mm. but okay yes times change but i still think mm. there's a lot you can do mm. with other asset classes that real estate for the average person who's not looking for who is looking for returns and also who is looking for an easy okay not actually an easy way but a better way yeah, of yeah. building wealth Okay. So Nini, um I think other before we continue because I want us to talk about treasury bonds and uh-huh. treasury bills uh-huh. and if there are any differences. What was t- would happen if the government was to default? Indo Swali uh niliulizaga Willis Otieno Bahim is a lawyer uh-huh. so he gave me his version of it. Uh-huh. Apart from him being a lawyer of course he's also part of the opposition. Uh-huh. Uh Safina party. Mm, yeah. So yeah na Jimmy Wanjigi of course they have to cane <laughs> the government. leader is Jimmy. Yes. Yeah. But what would, what would happen if Semeleo Kenya may default? Uh-huh. What happens? Yeah, actually I think there's, there's a thread that I did. I think it was sometimes last year, yeah. maybe late last year because mm. I was getting a lot of concerns from clients maybe from guys in my communities and followers who asking me, okay, will the government is the government likely to default and if they default what happens? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so basically, you know, basically a default what default means is that it's when a government is unable to meet the payment of a coupon. Yeah. Yeah so maybe there's a coupon that's supposed to be paid during a certain period of time but the government doesn't have enough money to pay for that coupon so mm. it means that the government has defaulted yeah. so after default there are some there are a lot of things that can happen there's restructuring there, there are haircuts there are a lot of things that can mm. happen to 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 mitigate the situation maybe to mm. to to come to a to to, to there, there, there are a couple of ways you can go about the mm. the the default mm. but now from a from an investor's point of view if the Kenyan government was to default i think there would be a lot of chaos in the financial in the financial markets because mm. you know if you look at our banks mm. and their and their and their assets that, and their their the the proportion of t bonds or what you call it, maybe government securities in their assets mm. it's quite high in most banks oh okay yeah mm. some have even highs of maybe 30% mm. 
mm-hmm. and also now you can also see that these asset manage ma- managers like maybe or these fund managers like what you have money market funds mm-hmm. most mm-hmm. of the allocations also in treasury bonds and treasury bills mm-hmm. yeah so the financial space or maybe the financial industry mm-hmm. it's huge on government securities because even pension schemes and mm-hmm. retirees money it's mo- hugely invested in government bonds yeah yeah, yeah so a default will bring a lot of ripple effects to the to the to, to the to the economy almost to the financial space mm-hmm. And also now, you know, once you default, your credit rating as a country goes down. Mm. So it will be very difficult for for the Kenyan government to to get financing. More loans. Yeah, mm. to get more loans, whether locally or maybe even externally. Okay, mm. the main the main pressure point, or maybe the main point, is the euro bond that's maturing this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which the government has been going in all sorts of ways, trying to say that you know they are buying back, they are trying they are trying to make early payments, mm. but you have seen all sorts of things happening mm. but yeah with the IMF and World Bank coming in and promising to back up the Kenyan government i think mm. we'll we'll sail through but okay nothing is guaranteed of course but i think we are at a, at a better place oh okay okay <laughs> okay and this better place here at death okay <laughs> 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 oh okay yeah, cuz uh, but so this haircut thing is real where like if you are to default utakuwa kiingia kwa bank account yako ulikuwa meka thau 10 na pata thau 7 Okay. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay, what a haircut. I'm not sure about the ripple effects that it will have down to the to the to the average to, Kenyan. To the average Kenyan. Mm. But basically a haircut is where okay, a haircut is where maybe or maybe the the, the restructure or maybe how the government can deal with this is that they will come in an, in an arrangement with investors yeah. who have who have lent the money who have who who they have borrowed money from yeah. and they will say that okay, yes we have we owe you this money but maybe we'll make this payment at an at a later date maybe you are supposed to be to, to get back your money maybe in this year mm. maybe in june but they will say that okay, okay maybe because of the financial challenges that we have mm. we are going to pay you that money in 2025 2026 2027 oh. and then maybe they can also that okay yes you are you are lending us the money at maybe 12% but now mm. we are going to give you at maybe <coughs> maybe at 5%, percent. At 5%. Mm. yeah and also maybe they can say that we have foregone maybe 30% of the loan that you had that you mm. had lenders mm. so if you, if you are if you are a big investor who had who had who had who had mm. loaned money to, million, to the government example. at maybe 10 million then they're mm. going to say okay you're going to get 30 percent off so you only owe you 70 we are going to you're only, we are only going to pay back 70 percent of that mm. yeah the rest uh the rest is apa iko nini susa manga you can go collect it in a place <laughs> a place called kajito mbe yeah. oh damn okay yeah. you know okay. it's better it's better mm. for you to get 20% than get yeah, 0% than zero. Yeah. Yes, yes yes so they're just mm. trying to 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 narrow down maybe to, to reduce the effects mm. yeah so okay so uh to manage your money market fund mm-hmm. treasury bonds if mm-hmm. i want to invest in treasury bonds mm-hmm. today mm-hmm. what do i do Yeah, I think it's quite easy nowadays because mm, mm. of the recent developments in the those the, the recent developments by CBK. Mm. So recently, I think it was late last year, mm. CBK launched the Dow CSD platform. Yeah. Yeah, which makes the account opening of a CDS account very easy. So a CDS account is what you used to invest in T bills and T bonds. Yeah, yeah. So before Dow CSD was launched late last year, I think it was in September last year, mm. if you wanted a CDS account to invest in bonds and bills, you had to physically walk in. CBK office. Oh, CBK. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And to open an account and account opening used to take quite long. 14 mm. days some clients will even take a month before they got their CDS accounts mm. in mm. check. But now with the app you just need to log in, you know, mm. your account, your KYC details within mm. I think 24 48 hours you have your accounts. Okay. And then now if just the bidding process which is very very which is very easy and straightforward. Okay, maybe for the normal person or maybe for the average person is that straightforward. Mm. But I think Right now there are a lot of resources about that. I keep yeah. on doing the threads on that. Mm. There even guys who have YouTube channels doing you know guiding people on how on the processes at calls. Yeah. Mm. I think mm. it's quite easy after you have you have opened your CDS account. Mm. But what you just need to understand is that the minimum investment is 50,000 for T-bonds, 100k for T-bills. Mm. Yeah, then the bidding process you're also bidding on the app. You can either bid competitively or non-competitively. Yeah. I usually advise clients to bid non-competitively. What what's bidding? Bidding is now, you know, the bills and bonds are auctioned by cbk yeah oh, so you okay. have to bid for mm. bidding is now the process of buying now oh, okay. before you buy you have to bid mm. then your bid must be accepted so that now you can make the payment from your bank account to the cbk account mm. Mm. yeah oh, okay so kishazi buy unazishikilia yeah so okay bonds have maturity dates mm. so you can mm. make, okay t bills are the shorter term securities mm. you have this 91 you have the 91 day the 364 day and the No, 91 day we have the 182 and the 364 dt bills so those are the, these are the short term securities mm-hmm. you know t bonds you can have maybe from one year to that years yeah 
Yeah, so depending on the maturity date of your bond, mm. you have the the most recommended strategy for retail investors is buy and hold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the secondary market isn't always an easy an easy work. Yeah, yeah. For most retail investors. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay. So um maturity date kifika i have to take the money am i can let it go okay out. so maybe something that maybe i forgot maybe something that i'm assuming it's straightforward is that mm. you know how you make money by investing in t bonds okay mm. t bills are the short term so mm. t bills are discounted so maybe you want to invest maybe 100k in a t in a t bill yeah so you'll pay a discounted price of of let's say 95000 maybe 96000 oh, okay. and then at the maturity of that t bill you'll get your 100000 back oh. so that's how you make money in a t bill Okay so you make this ka 5k. Yeah that's the because yeah. it's something short term. Yeah, yeah, but not okay. for T bonds mm. you have to they are long term. Mm. Yeah. So mm. there are coupon payments that are paid. So coupon payments is monthly. Mm. Monthly it's the semi annual interest payments not monthly but semi annual yeah. interest yeah. payments. Yeah. Yeah. So that means if you invest 100k in a T bond that may be 30 16% mm. that will be 16000 per annum. Okay let's not deduct let's assume it was an IFP so let's not deduct the withholding tax of 15%. Mm. So 16000 will get to in two semi annual interest mm. payments mm. of 8000 8000 oh, okay. every 6 months and then you can take your 100 now you will take your 100 after mm. the maturity date mm. so if you had bought if you had if you had if you had bought maybe a bond mm. that was maturing in the next 5 years you will mm. you will keep getting your interest payments mm. maybe your coupons mm. every year twice a year until the final year you will get your money back oh yeah. so okay this is interesting so let's say at i invest 100000 in t bonds eh? yeah na ni 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 16% yes? yeah. so i'll get this uh, let's say 16k yeah. till the maturity date yeah, so every yeah, year yeah. the 16k yeah but oh, we have not good. accounted for tax there eh, there's a, eh, there's a 15% okay. withhold tax but if yes. is tax free see uh, the 15% is from the, from the interest k. yeah from the 16k Okay so, so that will come okay, let's, let let's even push it on the higher mm-hmm, side let's mm-hmm. say it's 25% yeah. so that means i'm making 12k so this 12k if the maturity date is 5 uh, years mm-hmm. i'll have made 60k before i get back my 100 yeah okay and i can still decide not to withdraw the 100 to just stay there ama now after maturity i have to take it back and then okay after maturity again. after maturity there are a lot of there are a few options that that you can do so you can either you can either get your money back or maybe mm. you can use the money to, to buy another bond oh, okay yeah. okay okay oh but you can't just continue like uh, yeah it's not automatic oh, it's when not yeah automatic. You, when you are when you are bidding for the bond maybe when you are making the applications mm. you can either decide to do, what to do with your with, when you are when you get your your money back mm. are you going to use it to invest in another bond or do you want it deposited in your in your just bank account okay alafu uh, there is a difference in the money market fund in that with the money market fund i can just get my money out at any time see you yeah t bonds i can't t bonds okay t for t bonds it's quite it's quite it's not straight forward mm-hmm. but you can okay it's yes you can't the, li- the liquidity liquidity mm-hmm. is how fast you can access your money liquidity mm-hmm. for money market funds is quite yeah. it's quite high compared mm-hmm. to t bonds but they're still liquid in the fact that you can sell your bond in the secondary market mm-hmm. so let's say investor you are 10m this year mm-hmm. and maybe after t- maybe you bought a five year bond maybe mm. at maybe at the second year you get a financial emergency maybe you get a project that you need your, you urgently need your cash back mm. you can sell your bonds in the secondary market mm. and get your money back okay, okay. yeah but now selling in the secondary market now you can also obviously most mm. in some cases will make a small a small loss yeah, yeah. because now you it's it's a market mm. that's being determined by buyers and sellers so depending on how yields on the on the past and current mm. bonds are performing Yeah, you can either sell at a higher maybe at a lower price okay yeah. okay so um then the other question would be like if where come steve says mm-hmm. you have a 2 million shillings that you want to invest mm-hmm. na e 2 million you're so you're 100% sure even if you have a financial emergency mm-hmm. you'll never want to use this 2 million mm-hmm. what would you invest in a money market <laughs> fund treasury bonds or treasury bills i think I've, I've always get those questions where people are asking you know how where which is the best avenues to invest in mm-hmm. but i think you can't really take the question out of the financial situation of the person okay so like you have to take you as a more frequent say okay this is who i am mm-hmm. okay this is my level of wealth mm-hmm. these are my financial goals so this is those this is my age this is my risk appetite this is my mm-hmm. this is my these are my financial goals you have to mm-hmm. take out you have to take account those yeah, things yeah. that are attached to you that are personal to you and then bring them in the equation okay let's say that's how it will affect different people someone with a low risk appetite a low risk appetite trying to make a safe nini staki kitu tanipatia heart attack like hey amuka nilikuwa ni invest what were they saying were they saying that uh, like people who invested in nation media group 
at uh-huh. 1 million i think how many years ago uh-huh. i say the, the 1 million is 40k i had something like that that's something that i've seen in the financial industry and we mm. regard maybe i can just point it out here but i don't like such comparisons cuz mm. we, we we call that financial porn Mm. Oh, okay. Financial? Okay. Financial porn. Okay. Yeah. Porn. Uh, what Ian loves, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what financial I'm, porn? I'm a porn what, yeah. what, financial, <laughs> what, what, so what financial porn is, you'll see guys yeah. doing mads, like, okay, if you had invested, well, maybe when Safaricom was doing well, maybe right mm. now the hottest asset, maybe it's Bitcoin. Mm. You'll see guys saying that okay, if you had maybe, maybe bought Bitcoin at this amount, you'll have made this mm. kind of money. Mm. But what you forget is that there there have been challenges during that process maybe in the, in the last five years. Okay, maybe I can give a better example. It's maybe mm. one of the best used example is maybe a company like Apple. So mm. people who say that okay, maybe if you had bought Apple maybe in, maybe in the maybe 10 years ago you'll have yeah. made this amount of money. Mm. So you are trying to make the investment sound fancy or maybe good, mm. but up in between. Up there in between there have been a lot of challenges, a lot of panics. Mm. There are a lot of people who have sold yeah. to have taken a lot of a lot of courage a lot yeah. of guts. Psycho- yeah a lot of guts to hold mm. that investment mm. for that period of time yeah mm. so whenever 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 we're talking about nmg which is the, maybe probably one of the worst performing stocks also talk about the best performing stock like just give yeah uh just give a standard comparison just mm. don't be ones and said that's what you call now financial porn which okay. is not good and it's very it's very very prevalent in the Kenyan markets when people are doing analysis of stocks or maybe comparing one asset to the other Okay. Yeah. Alafu joke na there are people who will see the irony in what you said. I don't know if it's the irony ama ama vile umesema at when you're talking about like uh bad stocks come the nation media group mm-hmm. you have to give a standard comparison. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we put all groups together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I think it's all like traditional media especially yeah, yeah. Zari Lion Gazeti they've mm. been struggling because of how much technology has uh, yeah. changed. I mm. think lately I had this with Jemo Jemo Lem say Ali Sema every time you're reading a newspaper you're reading yesterday's news yeah. and i remember when he said that i was like yeah you know back mm. in the days this was actually news you yeah, yeah. read a newspaper and you'd be like this is news mm. but right now yeah. you're reading yesterday's news yeah. people have moved on like so kuza mm. gazeti nakuwa like apart from think pieces like why are we yeah. not buying newspapers you know yeah mm. uh, actually there's a guy called balajis mm. who was the former city at coinbase which is a crypto exchange firm mm. I think it was in around 2020 how he was making the predictions that <coughs> we are moving we are moving from the from the standard or maybe from the conventional media houses yeah. to whereby we'll have individual media houses if you look mm. at guys like Joe Rogan yeah. guys yeah. like even here in Kenya guys like Abel Mutua there are some mm. guys there are some brands mm. will be bigger than yeah. media companies mm. Mm. and and now with the with the ability of maybe platforms like social media and YouTube yeah. Yeah. anyone yeah. with a mic and a camera mm. can start doing their own things you can become your own reporter Yeah, yeah. And still do deliver better news quality news than what mm-hmm. maybe a media house can do yeah. in some angles. Yeah. Yeah, so there, if you look at the rise of platforms like Substack, newsletters, mm-hmm. you can see a lot of people are becoming creators. Mm-hmm. So that's how you'll see more people maybe moving from the traditional media industry not mm-hmm. the digital world. Yeah. So I think he made a very good prediction which is coming into play. Mm-hmm. Because uh, like one of the saddest things that I uh, uh, feel because you know I used to work in easy mainstream media mm-hmm. but right now apart from the old presenters I don't know anyone like I know <laughs> mina jua Jen Goyiri na jua Rashid Abdalla na jua Lulu Hassan <laughs> but if you are employed by nation last <laughs> year skujui na si ati na kukosea I just don't know you because I get my news on Twitter yeah you don't even I, know how to tune yes <laughs> <laughs> I, c- I can't tune into you like yeah It's, like it's like a whole different nini like you have to push some buttons save mm. what whatever like news yangu kitambo yeah. ni kwa namkaga so we nasikia this is 7 o'clock news this are with Laura Walubengo <laughs> i don't know the Laura Walubengo of nowadays like who is he yeah. or she seems to and that's how much the world is changing so much that now maybe these media stations and akaka the you know let's get the story of the polaroid com- camera mm-hmm. where i hear th- i don't know how true the story is but they were offered a certain amount of money and they said at which kui then a few years later phones digital like phones started taking photos na stock ya polaroid ikatoka from up to cuz remember it used to be the best technology cuz i could take an instant photo na ni print so mm-hmm. technology is harsh Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. the point the point I think the point that Balaji was talking about decentralized media decentralized finance we're moving yeah, to the decentralized yeah. era mm. you can see even bitcoin yeah. and the blockchain technology 
everything it's becoming decentralized nowadays yeah, so even yeah. media houses are becoming decentralized you know we are not relying on one media house to give us information mm. the, the centralized media house or maybe the mainstream media houses mm. we can rely on different guys and mm. still take that information as okay we, maybe we might we might we might we might negotiate maybe we might argue about the 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 truth or maybe the what do you call it maybe they're not a trusted media house but with time you yeah. can be able to build trust Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. bigger following and mm-hmm. bigger audiences and able to 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 be to to build trust. Okay. And then you also talked about circles uh, at a, at a, by the day we are recording I think the previous day there's mm-hmm. someone who'd written about a circle mm-hmm. and you'd corrected them. Uh, uh most students who are Americans on Ajuaga one of the things he teaches people is join a circle. <laughs> so how important is it to join a circle? Okay I think the biggest advantage of Wasako is the ability to access okay I'm not going to call it cheap credit but mm. maybe I can say affordable credit okay maybe affordable loans mm. because <clears throat> if you look at the if you look at what loans are mm. how, what hot rates banks are lending money to individuals and to businesses right now mm. after the CBK raised the CBR rate yeah. mm. I think it was was it late, late last year yeah late last year mm-hmm. yeah most guys have gotten the, the messages from their banks telling them okay your loan facility which was at 17% per annum mm. has been increased or has been revised to 19.5%. Mm. There are some banks with high yeah, loans yeah. At, at rates at maybe 23%, 25%. Mm, mm. But your circle will be, most circles are still at 12%. Mm. Yeah so there the that opportunity to to get Mm-hmm. an affordable maybe to have an alternative source of credit mm-hmm. I think it's the biggest advantage in a circle okay. but there are, there are also other advantages because mm-hmm. you know the saving your money in a circle so there are two ways you can make money in a circle one is through mm-hmm. share capital then the other one is through the savings mm-hmm. so share capital is the number of you buy shares to become a member of a circle so let's say we have Africa circle yeah yeah uh, so to be let's say Uh, under our rules and regulations you have that <coughs> for you to be a member of Africa circle mm. you have to have bought a thousand shares and each share is maybe 200 shillings mm. so mm. the minimum share capital is 200,000 yeah so that's the share capital now the share capital you get returns by dividends which are annual mm. then mm. savings also for most circles the the contributions are are compulsory so you must make uh, a certain amount per month mm. but circles nowadays are, are shifting from that and their contributions are voluntary that means you are on your own if you feel like making contributions you can make them if you don't feel like it you are on your own but now on your deposits you get what we call what you call rebates maybe what you call interest rates on your on your on your deposits okay yeah oh and uh so then nini i think there's something that i'd i'd, I'd skipped eh? mm-hmm. there's something i saw that you'd written um like when someone invests in treasury bonds there's something you called bond laddering. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I found it to be super interesting, but can you explain it to uh maybe mtojai skeje your bond laddering? So me I think you'd use the example of 1 million shillings. Mm-hmm. You want to invest 1 million shillings. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so bond ladder is a very useful strategy to invest mm-hmm. in T-bonds and to grow your bond portfolio. Okay. And how it works is that it works this way. So let's say you have Okay I'm trying to use numbers that will be easy to work with to and that makes sense. Yeah. Okay so let's just work with a million. So let's say you want to invest a million right now in bonds. Mm. So invest instead of investing that 1 million in one single bond, mm. you divide your 1 million into maybe a series of five bonds. Mm. So that's that's you have 200k per bond. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. So what you're trying to do with bond laddering is that you're trying to build a ladder yeah. with a series of bonds. Mm. So you are trying to stagger bond bond maturities and also the interest rates because different bonds have different yields and mm-hmm. different bonds have different maturity dates so i think you have seen recent okay i'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this maybe you're not following the market keenly like i do yeah, yeah, but yeah. recently when uh, when the yields from government bonds have hit 18% 17% mm-hmm. guys who had bought treasury bonds maybe last year mm-hmm. which were fetching maybe 12.5% 13% mm-hmm. are rushing to the secondary market to dispose there mm-hmm. to, to dispose their their poorly performing or maybe low yielding bonds because yeah. now bonds are mm-hmm. are fetching high returns because okay why will you hold your 10m mm-hmm. that's giving you 12.5% for 10 years while well, you yeah. can get a facility giving you 19% 18% mm-hmm. for the next 9 years mm-hmm. so it makes sense but now the now the, the, the disadvantage is mm-hmm. that you'll have to sell maybe your bond at a loss in the secondary market because no, no one wants to buy a, a low yielding bond yeah. so yeah. the price is very very chaotic or very mm-hmm. pathetic mm-hmm. 
So a bond ladder is where you distribute your bonds maybe in a series of in a series of bonds like we said five bonds. Mm. So you have maybe one bond maturing one year from maybe two years from now, mm. another bond maturing maybe three years from now, another one four years, five years depending. You can stagger them anyway, yeah. but just have to they, they must have different maturity dates. So mm. you can try to achieve different things with the bond ladder. Where one one is getting a monthly interest payment every month because mm. you said bonds you are paid two times a year yeah. or semi annual payments. So if you have six bonds, that six times two you get. 12 monthly payments. Mm-hmm. You know the good thing is CBK is that in their prospectus will tell you okay this bond will, coupons will be paid will be paid on maybe July, July maybe Feb and mm-hmm. maybe 2 plus 6 that's August so mm-hmm. Feb and August of every year. Mm-hmm. So you can get different bonds that are paying an interest maybe a coupon at every month of the year. Mm-hmm. So with that you can easily build a portfolio oh. that gives you passive income every month. I mm-hmm. yeah, you know the other thing that that's good with building a bond ladder is that you can also reduce the chances of something like you know the fluctuation of bond yields that has happened yeah. so now instead of you know instead of being locked in the 12 percent yield that we, we talked about maybe that was bonds of fetching last year mm. you, you still have money to invest in bonds that are being floated nowadays yeah. when the yields are high mm. so in your portfolio you'll have a mix of both yeah which is very high good because you have spread the, your risk so for you you are mm. comfortable because you know if bonds, if the yields rise, you can still invest more money because you are building a ladder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and na yule sema right now like it's so simple. I just nini naenda kwa hiyo nini na open a CDS. Yeah, it's not like a long process. It's not a long process. So it's if I was to Google CDS, it, yeah, it's CB, it's CBK. So you can just go to the CBK website. You'll find oh. the OCSD. Maybe mm-hmm. you can just Google the OCSD. Mm-hmm. So on the CBK website, you just open there. You mm-hmm. fill in your details. You open your account. Mm-hmm. Then maybe within 24 for eight hours you'll get your account ready. Mm. Now the only challenge for you to build a bond ladder right now may be the number of bonds bonds being issued by CBK. Because mm. okay, mm. I think currently we only have two bonds mm. in the that that have been issued by that have been floated by CBK. Yeah. And also the maturity dates because you know you are you are looking at different bonds, different, different maturity, maturity dates, dates yes. yeah, and also mm. different payments monthly payments for the coupons. Mm. So mm. there are those factors that that you're trying to look at, but. <clears throat> With that also you can also look, you can also tip into the secondary market and get bonds that have been issued in the past that mm. maybe meet meet the the requirements that you want mm. so maybe if you want a four year bond that's not in the market maybe you can go in the secondary market maybe you'll find one mm. and going to the secondary market make sure you use a stock broker or an asset management company because they are most affordable because mm. banks banks are very, are very you now we go back <coughs> to the got no kina CIC yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Money market. Okay. okay, they are okay. Maybe they will bring. Okay, say say uh, say isn't isn't yet offering the the option to invest mm. in bonds. in T bonds, but there are other mm. asset management companies like Kuza mm. that can give you the option to to buy bonds in the square market. But also stock brokers can give stock brokers like Fed Investment Bank, AB Access Africa. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Also okay. give you the option to access this the square market. And is it as still as safe as dealing with CBK directly? The only difference is that there is a small charge that they'll, they'll charge you mm. yeah that's like, the only uh, difference the big? service fee because they are coming in there to provide the service for you mm. yeah oh, but, but it's not like a ridiculous five percent or no no it's quite it's actually quite low mm. i think it's even less than one percent yeah okay for okay. that's for stock brokers mm. but for banks they charge entry entry what you call interest and exit fees mm. so if you're buying uh if you're buying uh a, a t bond mm. they will charge you for you to they will charge you the ent- the entrance fee or maybe the access okay. fee for that for that bond so there is no according to you there is no reason to buy t bonds and what through a bank just use okay maybe some okay i've, I've okay i've not tried all banks but mm. mostly from from my experience and from what i've seen mm. it's not advisable yeah yeah so you have to you know the average person doesn't know the details or maybe the differences or the alternatives mm. but if you know how it works and you go through the details and the transaction the the what do you call them the the costs that are involved and you are sure that okay comparing to going through cbk or maybe going through a stock broker that mm. you have mm a good deal then you can mm. still go for it i'm not sure about all banks but most banks that i've seen mm. are very charge very ridiculous costs okay okay because uh. it's it's so interesting looking at easy <coughs> iso rates like if someone was to kujipanga vizuri mm-hmm. uh, um and then you talked about so spacing that's dependent on cbk yeah 
spacing no you yeah. can also control that because mm. now the spacing now you can have a two year bond a three year bond a four year bond a five year bond mm. but what i said is if you want if you if you want to to have maybe a perfect or maybe a good bond ladder mm. you have to access the scalar market because that's where you can get different bonds that are, many bonds because cbk only floats mm. bonds monthly mm. and they will float like two bonds per month and maybe those bonds that will float this month mm. are not they don't have the qualities that you're looking for But okay mm-hmm. that's we are talking about someone who has that maybe the 1 million to invest right now yeah, but yeah. but if it's some that you want to build over time maybe the next 2 3 years mm. i think there is time within 3 years i think you can get the the good bonds that you are looking for oh okay yeah, okay with time you I can mean, get it i mean the time you can invest in this yeah then and you every wait. time there's an opportunity yeah, invest in yeah, yeah. evo yeah, yeah, yeah. and then before you know it you've spaced yeah, them yeah you've spaced them well yeah yeah uh, allows us that you can just uh, you have your liquid some degree yeah, yeah 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 and also and still getting your still your getting assets some. are generating cash okay and like the guy who bought land in kamulu who's just sitting in the <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the road to be constructed yeah and jeki kuja jeki fika hapa and as yet and as yet passed through yeah kwa kwa then another thing i also so you talking about is people can invest in the uh, nairobi stock exchange me the closest i've ever come to investing in nairobi stock exchange was working mm-hmm. at nation media group <laughs> other is <laughs> I always look at it like you know hii ni kitu ya iko na wenyewe is are there easy ways like you just go online and invest in the stock exchange no yeah i think nowadays it's quite easy we moved from you know way back where guys used to you have to trade in the in the in the, in the trading floor mm. you have to have the share certificates mm. yeah nowadays everything is online you have some very good brokers who are doing who who have very good services personally mm. I use ab axis you mm. can just mm. download the app on play store sign up for your your trading account yeah then you load your your account and you just get started with investing in stocks but if i'm trading uh, in, is is it different from forex stocks it looks super close to forex if you're telling me i'm logging into my trading account mm-hmm. that's like logging into my forex account am okay the difference between trading and investing is that trading is a for, is for the short term investing m- mostly is for mm. the long term yeah. also what can we call it trading most guys use leverage or what we call margins and spreads yeah, but yeah, yeah. investing you use you invest you are not investing you are not investing in virtual things yeah, you're investing yeah. in physical stocks yeah so there's there is yes, there's a difference also your, your time frame is long you're mm. investing maybe for 5 Mm. Ten, yes. So I can invest. I don't have to trade. Yeah, I don't have to trade. Okay. Okay. Cuz yeah. you're trading don't gonna journey tricky. <laughs> gets tricky. Mm. And then you'd also talked about how according to you mm. education insurance policies are not a good investment. Mm-hmm. Why? <laughs> mm. I think that's one of the biggest that's one of the biggest discussions that's always thrown across when we whenever I think I did at the red mm. and whenever a people come across you know there's always that cycle of threads that you have done you know someone will see it for the first time mm. will reshare it then it will appear again in the yeah, in the yeah. conversation so whenever it's recycled back to my timeline i'll see you guys have different different opinions mm. but education insurance policies if you look if you look at it and how it has been designed the mm. main okay i think it sells one because you know everyone wants to, to invest in their children's education Mm. and everyone imagines that maybe they will struggle or maybe they will have some challenges okay you're not you're never sure how your how your financial status will be yeah. whenever that time comes so i think it's it's a the, the object maybe the idea mm. to secure your kids education it's a very powerful motive to save for maybe to invest for yeah. so i think that's the point number one. it's a very powerful idea maybe a powerful motive to invest for mm. but now if you look at the solutions that the education insurance policies bring first the first okay they try to combine insurance and wealth creation in the same place mm. because okay it's it's, a, it's both they try to say that it's both a, a, an investment product because you are saving for your kids education yeah so you are saving so you're investing for your kids education and at the same time it's a life it's a, it's a, it has a life insurance on top so mm. that means if you died your yeah, kid yeah. will still still you still see through school so the biggest the biggest challenge is on the returns the returns it's quite ridiculous mm, mm. yeah so you can imagine if you are saving let's say 10000 per mm. month for the next maybe 10 years mm. and you when you do the math you can see that whatever you'll have saved and mm. whatever they will give you mm. there's a very big there's a very small difference yeah yeah oh okay yeah mm. so i think that's that's the huge that that's that's the biggest challenge it comes to education policies so you'd rather if because you're still investing you'd mm-hmm. rather now invest in the money market fund or even is working at treasury bills treasury bonds because you'll still be able to pay your fee and it's a better return 
and it send your okay when it comes when it comes to returns for maybe guaranteeing for the future if you're mm. saving or investing for the future if you can have just a good investment mm. portfolio mm. obviously you can have maybe a chunk of it that you're saying that okay this chunk or maybe this section of my portfolio mm. is set specifically for maybe paying for my kids yeah. school fees yeah. but yeah. again okay not to really discredit the education policy i think one yeah. thing that maybe w- the only advantage that i've seen about them is mm. even if you died as a parent mm. you are still sure that your kid will get educated oh. but now you know for your investment portfolio mm. maybe your next of kin may decide to educate or maybe not educate your kid mm. yeah, so i think that's the only advantage mm. Mm. yeah but i think i've tried to talk to a lot of industry players a lot of fund managers a lot of companies asset management companies and i think there are some moves being made in the markets they're mm. trying to come up with better products for for investing maybe for saving for securing your kids education mm. so mm. i think it's a, it's an it's an interesting space to watch okay okay yeah. okay because uh, another thing of course that you always talk about you always talk about the emergency fund mm-hmm. and uh So what's an emergency fund maybe for someone who like you Okay so emergency fund is mm. like, it's like okay this is like now the 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 second stepping stone maybe the if if saving in a money market fund or step one, mm. now maybe getting an emergency fund is step two. when you're mm. starting getting serious with your finances getting organized with your finances before you now start investing mm. so an emergency fund basically it's a pool of funds that can see you through maybe a certain period of time without mm. relying on your on your income. Yeah. Yeah, so let's say your basic expenses, you're talking about basic expenses, the necessities, maybe the your rent, your food, mm. maybe your transport to work and back, your basic necessities, internet now it's a necessity, so maybe your internet yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's maybe your monthly expenses come to 50k. Mm. Those are the basic. We're not talking about the the share of hair money and what have you going for concerts or trips, yeah. we're not talking yeah. about that. Yeah. We're talking about the basics, it's 50,000 per month. Mm. So your emergency fund is where you you pull your savings, maybe your income in a place where it can sustain you maybe for a period of one month two months three months six months even a whole year mm. yeah so an emergency fund it's advice that you can you should have an emergency fund for at least six months yeah yeah, yeah because okay. obviously the longer the better because mm. you never so know you six happen. months in a fakwa kulipia hizo bila umesema yeah so if if your basic is 50k then your emergency fund should be around 50 times 6 300k mm. yeah Oh okay you look at your expenses and yeah your you, normal expenses yeah uh, and then you work with that okay yeah okay. so the importance mm. of an emergency fund is one mm. to secure your financial future for the short yeah. term because you can lose your job you can lose your primary source of income mm. Mm. a lot of things can happen where you the way you can lose your source of income yeah maybe you are you are shifting jobs you know there are some yeah. guys who yeah. say okay mm. I've worked for this company I don't like them maybe they are they have some toxic behaviors that I don't like maybe I don't like their their culture maybe how they run things yeah so I know I know I know I'm a, I have a marketable skill so maybe I can within two months three months I can get the company that I can work with then maybe you don't want to continue holding on to that company mm. as you're looking mm. for the other for the mm. job mm. so you can leave your job still have your emergency fund intact you can can fall onto it and see you through the three months six months that you are mm. out of your job before you get another you get to get your other job mm. the other thing is when you're starting investing you know we always say that you can only invest money that you cannot afford you can, that you can afford to lose yeah okay obviously no one wants to lose money in investing yeah, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. you yeah. should just be cautious because mm. you cannot invest money that it's it's, it's planned to pay your rent mm. so an emergency fund gives you the gives you the comfort as an investor mm. because let's say because let's say you have invested in in some stocks or maybe some t bonds that you plan to hold for the next 10 years mm. then you have a financial emergency mm. that you need cash instantly yeah so that means you can't you can't you can't you can't you can't sell your you can't sell your your bonds or maybe mm. your stocks mm. because you have an emergency fund that you can yeah you, you can, can fall back to. into yeah mm. so that's the other essence of a, of a of an emergency fund and then maybe the final one is just financial emergencies mm. you know they happen any any other day so whenever you have a financial you have a financial emergency you don't have to take a loan maybe from your friend mm. you know telling someone to send you to k urgently yeah you can always fall back to your to yourself and okay see yourself through oh so na sema ma demo na fako na hiyo actually they do have emergency funds yeah ni sisi ni sisi ma demo na fako na ata demo na kwa mejipanga sana by the way eh fako na one year plan you get a short term plan eh kuna lele lele alafu a sinking fund 
Yeah, cuz a thinking fund I think ni watu kama mimi wale we have weird addictions. But come to understand a thinking fund, how would you explain? Okay, so a thinking fund is now like, you know, there's now like the the elite style of getting organized with their finances. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a thinking fund is just where you are trying to get more maybe maybe a little bit organized with their finances. Yeah. Where by now you are saying that okay, I have to plan for most of my expenses because mm. now I have to, you know, have an organized have a budget. Yeah. Have investing or be saving goals, you know, every money that you're making mm. you have already maybe anticipated two months maybe a month before even plans in your bank account is going to be allocated yeah, yeah. so a seeking fund is basically how you save for your short term expenses maybe mm. you are planning that maybe i'm going to uh, to to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to travel maybe during valentines you can start saving for for that early enough <clears throat> maybe you're planning on to go back to school yeah later in the year you can start saving up for that maybe you're planning to have a wedding you can mm. start saving up for that mm. yeah, any short term expenses that you think you are going to meet in the near future yeah, maybe okay. maybe you want to buy a car cash mm. you can start saving up for that yeah yeah so just getting organized their finances but you don't want to exceed your budget maybe to to hinder your investment goals just want to be to be to be focused maybe to be to go to have a better financial plan okay yeah. that, i love when any uh, uh, gary mm. cash or slowly which one do you think is the better way okay when it comes to to car financing mm. first and foremost let's like uh, like uh, like i said pre- in the maybe in the previous discussion is that yeah it's very personal to begin mm. with yeah so to begin to begin very personal in terms of okay there are guys who are not comfortable with loans mm. there's someone who whenever he has a loan facility maybe they cannot sleep well at night because they are imagining okay what if i lose my job gari mm. mm. or something of the sort so they yeah. are very mm. uncomfortable with loans but there's another guy who will have a loan and yeah ata kumkanya na kongana loan yeah so i think there's there's that personal personality to it yeah so one it's very personal yeah but then when it comes to doing the maths now maybe from a financial analysis perspective mm. you have to consider a couple of factors mm. yeah so let's we can take a look at both ways whether buying cash or maybe getting alone yeah yeah so i think one there are some guys who are very lucky mm. who, are, who are who are very good employee benefits mm. you know mm. there are guys, guys who get car loans at 3% 5% yeah yeah yeah, yeah. even mm. mortgages at 3% mm. so if i was working for certain organization <laughs> mm. i'll never buy a car cash 5% and you can get maybe 12% in a money market fund or maybe yeah. 19% in a yeah, yeah. bond mm. the difference is quite it's quite it's quite huge and that's a no brainer yeah yeah so that's one thing taking advantage of maybe low 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 rates if you yeah, are accessible okay. to them mm-hmm. yeah maybe mm-hmm. if you're in a circle whereby you can get a car loan at very low interest rates that's mm-hmm. that's that's a no brainer mm-hmm. because it makes a lot of financial sense because you are the, the return maybe the the borrowing rate and the returns you can get from investing that money the difference is it's quite huge yeah so that's one thing the other thing <laughs> buying cash versus versus now taking a loan mm. like like i like like i mentioned if you buy if you buy if you buy things you have the things but don't have the cash yeah yeah so the advantage is maybe taking a loan maybe mm. not looking at maybe the interest rates and the other things maybe just looking at having the cash now is yeah. that you still yeah. have your cash flow no yeah. cash is very important because you can mm. still meet your financial needs you can still use cash mm. Mm. yeah mm. Mm. then you can still invest this cash mm in some scenarios but now here now you have to also fall fall back to the interest rates depending on the on the lending rate that you are given maybe by your bank or whatever car financing you are using mm. so if you can invest these one maybe you want to buy a car that's worth maybe 1 million maybe let's say let's say 1 million and maybe you can get an investment that can give you maybe 19% like the T bonds right yeah. now 19% per annum and maybe your loan it's maybe 12 or maybe 13% oh, okay okay you can you can decide to take the loan and maybe invest your money and use the returns from this mm. investment mm. to pay back the loan mm. okay theoretically it sounds perfect yeah, because on a spreadsheet it sounds perfect but now doing it practically it may have a, a lot of hard. but yeah. it makes sense yeah it makes sense when you are when you're doing the calculations so, mm. yeah yeah so the, the fact that you have you have maintained your cash flow maybe you have cash you know cash is always important in yeah, businesses yeah, yeah. yeah so because you know without cash you can't pay workers you can't even pay your rent so cash so you, you have retained your cash mm. then you can invest your money in an asset that can mm. give you better returns than the, the borrowing rate that mm. the bank mm. has given you mm. and then also what else had we, had we talked about cuz we got na compare to those oh two. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Maybe oh, I think I'm exhausted the points actually. Yeah. So those are the okay. main those are the main things. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, I think the, the the point I wanted to repeat was the point on you know if you have a very mm. if you have very friendly French mm. terms like yeah, the five percent, yeah, yeah, like, percent. Yeah, that's a no yeah, brainer. It's a whatever. Yeah, yeah but now if but now if you are taking a loan, yagari, yagari, twenty percent per annum. Now so you may take a second hand <laughs> Range Rover at five m. Now it's by the time we normally take a loan, we may pay like nine m. See, no, like it's ridiculous. You yeah. have paid so much. And then actually, I think. Calons bring a lot of discomfort to people like people's lives. You are living a comfortable life, mm. but now because you want to maybe go that mm. higher in life, yeah. maybe you want to, to feel good, maybe you want to improve your status. Mm. So let's say you're earning maybe 100k per month. You yeah. are living in a decent place. Maybe you're paying rent at 25, 25, 20k. Yeah. You are having a lot of a lot of cash to save and invest and do quite a, a couple of things. But when you have mm. taken this car loan, Yeah. And now the monthly payments are around maybe 40,000. Mm. So you mm. have your 40,000, you have 25,000. So you see your budget now is very strained. Now you mm. also have to account for fuel, servicing, maintenance, mm. parking fees, you know, you the emergency that comes with this car. Mm. So now your budget is overstretched now. So yeah. you have yeah. a car but have not a kit at the end of the month because everything is gone. Mm. So I think you have to you have to be very considerate whenever you are taking a car and more so I think one of the worst cases mm. you can always have is that bring the discomfort that you never wanted. Mm, yeah, because yeah. I think there, there's a quote that says, "Don't leave, don't. What, what does it say? Don't, don't go for the life. Don't lose the life that you have, mm. going for the life that you want." Oh, okay. Yeah, because now okay. you, you are comfortable, you are mm. doing well, mm. but now you go for the car, and now you are struggling financially. Yeah, and, yeah. and you have quite a decent. Yourself. Yeah, you have, you have stretched your budget. We come to a yoga. Yeah, because there are people who always ask this question mm-hmm. that if you are Let's say you are earning 100k mm-hmm. per month. Mm-hmm. What's your ideal rent? That also depends on the, the <laughs> worst. Like let's if you are someone trying to make sound sound budget this is the only decisions. income you have, not mm-hmm. the secondary income. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think it depends with a with a couple of factors. One is the other items in your budget. Mm. You know there's someone who Una, one, there's, there's someone who only pays mm. you know there's someone who has very huge other things mm. in their budget maybe mm. they are paying school fees yeah, yeah. they are paying they are paying rent mm. maybe they are paying black tax mm. and other things they're sending I money i think you need you need standard black tax for a yeah. lot of us it's yeah so i think it depends mm. with your budget cumulatively yeah. to begin with mm. because now if 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 you have other things to do mm. that your budget has to meet that means the level that you are rent the the high the maybe the the ceiling of your rent mm. level comes down now mm. but now if you if, if maybe you don't have those many expenses you know that guys maybe you are you come up, you come from a well of family yeah you know you don't have people maybe telling you to loan them to, or maybe to lend them money once in a while mm. you don't have fees that you're paying you're just living yeah. by yourself so your yeah. budget is quite it's quite accommodative mm. yeah so you can afford maybe to even to even to to to, to, to spend a lot on mm. on your on your rent yeah yeah but basically maybe with all factors being constant of which now it because like we said personal finance is being is very personal that's why i started from the point of it mm. depends with your other items on your budget mm. Mm. but for the standard person for the average person between a fifth a quarter percent mm. uh, a quarter or a fifth that's 20 25% yeah of your of your income mm. yeah should be, should go to rent and if okay. you're, if you're exceeding that mm. You should, you should start getting worried mm. yeah, oh, if you are the okay, standard okay. person so uh, so that's around like 20 to 25% 20 to 25% yeah okay so come on if 50% we una unless now you you know that you know there are those guys who are very personal with and mm. also uh, i think also the the income range also matters yeah yeah because you know someone I think the income range matters because now someone earning maybe the standard or maybe the average salary in Kenya salary like, which is around that 1000 yeah yeah uh, yeah So I think and someone who is earning maybe a million mm. you know someone who is earning a million if even if they can spend 50% on rent they still mm. have 500,000 to spend yeah yeah so I think the budget okay. also matters but now someone who is mm. earning just that 1000 if you spend 15,000 mm. you only have 15,000 on mm. Mm. on to spend Yeah, but I mean I'm I'm, I'm, I'm so um, pro rent like ni kisikiona na a million on aishi ka 500 na kutana nyahunya. I will feel like yeah because because <laughs> nini kitu moja nime notice na na Kenya pia when you look at rent mm-hmm. I feel like if you are patient you can get a good house at a good price. Yeah. I've seen there are like, always house deals. Yeah, you know how's na advertise you are like Karen 
450k and you have your own loan and you have what cuz you are in Mbali so it discourages a lot of people from staying there eh? mm-hmm. and then i've seen some houses in Loresho so i think with a budget of 200k you should be able to get something you see to me eh hey, like yeah, 500 hey, yeah, <laughs> hey, <laughs> half a million how is a kenya so unapataga alafu nini um there's a, another time i don't know where, what the discussion was but mm-hmm. kuna time kulikuwa na discussion ya watu wakisema like if you saved your money in dollars mm-hmm. maybe at the beginning of the year mm-hmm. ruto akiingia mm-hmm. ulikuwa na 1000 dollars right now mm-hmm. uh, you have wa well, like over 150k mm-hmm. and you started out with 120k mm-hmm. but then i think you talked about uh, a better investment would have been the USS, usd money market fund yeah. so how does that work like if i'm in kenya can i still invest in that okay let me just clarify my points yeah. then maybe it never came out as i as i expected yeah, so yeah. the first thing okay maybe this the this recency bias because yeah. that's what has been happening recently mm. so yeah, last year I think 2022 let's start with 2022 yeah uh, our shilling lost mm. by 9% maybe it depreciated by 9% to the usd yeah. then last year it depreciated by 27 28% yeah, yeah. 28% to the dollar mm. so guys were like obviously people that we are always doing analysis and a lot of mm. analysis making so guys were like okay if maybe you had invested you have just converted your savings to to dollars at the beginning of the year you could have you could be having this mm. you could have made this mm this ROI return on investment yeah, yeah. just by holding just by converting your shillings to dollars and just sitting with yeah, your cash yeah, in your bank yeah, account yeah. doing nothing else mm. and okay, those things actually i think there are a lot of guys who are trying to sound to sound smart mm. by saying that mm. but i think okay yes there's a level of smartness in that but yeah. i think it's it's not the end that's the start not the end because mm. i think the, one of the biggest things that i tried to do last year was helping guys to come up with usd portfolios mm. usd denominated portfolios mm. so usd denominated portfolios are you investing in, in a portfolio whereby mm. all your assets are usd backed assets yeah so you are you have your usd money market funds you have maybe mm. a usd fixed income fund mm. you have mm. offshore stocks and etfs you have maybe a robon and such Mm. other kind of assets so mm. you see now the guy who made 27 percent maybe from just holding dollars and sitting with his cash in his bank account he only made 27 percent mm. but maybe someone who had maybe the first step or maybe ranking them mm. according to returns mm. maybe the person who had invested the money in a usd money market fund yeah now they have the average good. was around five percent six percent now add that to the 27 percent mm. yeah so that guy had 13 that that yeah, 3%. Yeah. Yeah. Now there are, maybe there's another person who had invested maybe in, in the in US stocks and ETFs maybe a good index fund or maybe an ETF like this and P500. Mm. That the fund returned I think it was around I can't remember the the exact figure. Mm. It was around 20, 20 something percent. Mm. Now add 27 20% to mm. 27 percent that's 47%. Mm. The other the even other asset class that even returned better yeah, yeah. than 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 the US stocks and ETFs. I think mm. the Nasdaq 100 which is also a very good index last year yeah. returned I think 55%. Okay. Yeah so it's it's something that happens normally in the markets and those are some of the factors that you have to 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 account for when investing the lot okay. of risks. So the basic risk that everyone understands is the inflation rate. Mm. Then people have last year people were brought into light about the currency risk. Mm. Yeah, whereby you know I think you have seen currencies who who, who have devalued their currencies like Zimbabwe I think some times back they are going to buy a loaf of bread with a wheelbarrow of cash mm, maybe mm. a sack of cash yeah yeah so you can imagine if you're a millionaire in Zimbabwe at that time mm. you just become just a broke man because now you're going to buy a loaf of bread with the 1 million yeah, so yeah. it's basically nothing because now your currency has been devalued and mm. these are some of the risks that you have to consider as an investor mm. yeah whenever you are looking at your cumulative portfolio okay. because now if you hold all your assets in Kenya shillings and then we never know how our economy will perform mm. how our cbk will but sasa swali ni yo like if i'm in kenya uh-huh. how can i invest in that like the usd okay. money market fund okay so usd money market funds are offered by the same guys who offer you who the, offer kenya. the kenyan money market fund the yeah. shilling money market funds yeah. okay not mm. all of them but mm. most do most who offer the shilling money market fund also offer the usd money market fund so so kina cic Yeah, so yes, they have a dollar fund, Kusa mm-hmm. they have a dollar fund. Do they have a euro one? Euro no, no, no. Oh, yeah, so just dollar? USD and shilling. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because oh, I think it's this the, 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 the least, but I'm assuming your your, euro, your dollar has to be high. 
the, the least amount you can the least lose. amount yeah okay it's not quite high nowadays they have brought it down mm. you know guys are learning about these things mm. you know financial literacy will be investing even investing in money market funds a few years ago it was something for the elite yeah and the yeah. high wealth mm. high net worth or maybe guys who are who are very financial financially literate but now it's becoming the norm mm. so i think there's a time cic had the minimum of 10 thousand usd yeah. they brought it down to 1000 usd oh okay who's oh. has it as 100 usd mm. yeah so even with the 100 us dollars you can open an account oh okay yeah. that's good and this is still low risk because it's a yeah, low risk low risk because they're investing mm. in usd mm. bank fixed deposit deposits and euro bonds mm. so bonds and fixed deposits are quite a low risk oh okay and so yeah, yeah so so the guy who was trying to to urge kenyans to convert their shillings to mm. dollars and hold them yeah, that's, what will that's happen now high. what will happen now if maybe next year okay maybe, This 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 a hard this a long call because I'm sure yeah. the Kenyan shilling even this will take mm. quite a beating but maybe this, it will become more stable this year. Yeah. But what will happen in a year where maybe the the Kenyan shilling becomes maybe more stable mm. and the depreciation goes to normal levels where yeah. it, it has been it has mm. it has always been because on normal times mm. the Kenyan shilling depreciates depre- depreciates against the US data rate of maybe 2 to 4%. Mm. So mm. now you can see if you, if you change your your shillings to dollars mm. and then you get you are 2 to 4% you could, mm. you are doing worse than someone who just invested their money in yeah, in a money yeah. market fund who got mm. 10%. Mm, mm. Yeah so it's it's not about just converting your yeah, yeah. don't look it from a, from one place or maybe a, from a single place mm. just look it at just look at investing mm. from all places and just understand have the understanding of why are you converting your shillings to dollars. Okay. So I think that was a very conventional financial advice last year even this year because mm. it seems to be working and it's it's what it's it's what we call maybe most people are being affected by the reason see bias because you can only remember the mm. effects of maybe one year two years back mm. but you cannot you are not accounting for maybe what has been happening for the past 10 15 years yeah i love yeah. i think pia in akwaga it's very people go online mutaenda kwa maybe kwa xc.com and angalia exchange rate anaona maybe 1 150 one shilling ni 158 anafikiria kienda kwa bank atapati na ebay kienda kwa bank lazima uongeze kwa bole juu so let's say now all of a sudden it's 163 so 163 ukipata emergency kio kwa hiyo get ukishana na hii dollar at 163 ukirudi unaenda kwa 155 I think yeah. like you lose so much money yeah. like don't don't do it if you already have dollars deal na hizo dollars kiwa hivyo yeah, but you kwanza ku convert kiruka ruka unaweza share yeah, actually that was uh, that was one of the things i was trying to help a lot of clients understand maybe a lot of guys understand because mm. okay investing in a usd money market fund we investing in dollars for the short term is yeah. ideal for someone who wants in dollars because mm. now for you don't have to maybe do that currency conversion yeah conversion yeah, yeah. Mm. but now if you are earning in shillings so let's say you, you convert your your savings for december in mm. dollars mm. and then maybe after a few days you have not convert your dollars to your shillings yeah. that effect, effects rate will lead you to losses yeah yeah, yeah because of those you. margins you mm. have made losses actually Mm. Yeah but if you're investing in USD backed assets think long term because that will allow time for maybe the depreciation the rates to to cancel mm. out each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cuz uh, reason I was asking you if you're not going to localize your euro ni cuz sisi sasa tukiwa Kenya mm-hmm. ni neutral ipaga na euro naitwa YouTube. Mm-hmm. But now if you're going to convert the euro to dollar you know, <laughs> shall lose the hari. so it's not worth it. Afadhali ubaki tu na shilingi yako. Mm-hmm then you just invest in shillings like if you're going to have to invest and change mm-hmm. but now let's say you are a kenyan in the diaspora mm-hmm. now this makes sense see do the usd money market fund yeah. even in kenya mm-hmm. plus ata ukiwa okay, us kenya see do kama okay investing in usd okay we are talking about we are not only looking at usd money market fund maybe yeah, converting yeah. our shillings to usd we are looking at investing in uh, maybe a usd backed portfolio yeah, yeah. in in general mm. so it depends with your uh, with first what what you are paid in or maybe what mm. what your basic salary what your basic currency is yeah. so if for someone who is paid paid in dollars it's quite mm. easy to convert your dollars to, to transfer your dollars from your bank account to the dollar account for this money market fund it's quite mm. easy mm. and you don't have to go through the the margins when you're buying and selling because yeah. you're only yeah. tra- doing the transfer okay but from a from a general perspective when it comes to investing mm. it's very wise for you to have not to have all your investments like i was saying maybe in all your investments in shillings because mm. you never know maybe we may, we may be the next example where maybe our currency yeah, gets yeah. devalued by a huge percentage mm. yeah but now yeah it makes sense and now it depends on the time frame if you're investing yeah. for the short term mm. you cannot it's not wise for you mm. to have to go for the usd money market fund if you're investing for the short term and you're paid in shillings because mm. now withdrawing depositing those fx differences mm. you may even make losses 
Yeah. Yeah. But now if you are looking for you are look, if you're having a long term perspective maybe like for for you who is paid in euros mm. there's some brokerage there's some brokerage accounts that allows you to, to invest in US stocks and ETFs whereby you can deposit your euros directly oh okay yeah mm. so you can mm. just hold your investments even in euros mm. yeah oh, okay and also now okay. for someone who, who maybe is investing long term maybe mm. a Kenyan who wants in shillings who invest mm. in long term in dollars mm. you can invest in long term asset classes maybe like a euro bond okay mm. maybe that is maybe that the capital required may make keep a lot of people off but maybe assets like maybe the the US stocks and ETF maybe offshore stocks and ETFs mm, mm. yeah okay 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 yeah yeah so yeah, i think this has been a, like a master class <laughs> uh, so you also uh, offer these services yes? like if people want to talk to you directly they can yes? yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so what one is a recharge because na jua twitter because mok follow on twitter it's kahome steve eh? yeah how many it's Kahome and Asko Steve. Eh, Kahome and Asko Steve. Oh, they can just search Gishuki Kahome. Eh, yeah, Gishuki Kahome. Yeah. Na watu wabaki wameni. I think uh, at some point nikishafikiria uh, more financial ni nizi ndakutafuta tena. Eti kicha hapa. Cuz but endelea kitu kitu unafanya cuz I always look at your threads and I, I ask myself what if I knew this at this level. Mm-hmm. And normally even when I bring uh, someone like you is cuz I'm trying to, to first talk to the 20 year olds mm-hmm. wow to balo ko young they've mm-hmm. just started earning yes mm-hmm. and then after how ni bonge of course na people in their 30s like in ian mm-hmm. and then now for anyone else it's never too late to learn mm-hmm. yes it's exactly. never too late you can't be like ah since niko 50 what is sani anze to make dumb decisions what if you live to 100 mm. <laughs> like yeah because there's someone who's in their 50s who live longer than someone who's two years old so yeah, that's the reality of life so you have to make just sound financial decisions and why do you think that schools never teach financial literacy because <sighs> you have a school that closed Yeah, tukot na joke juu ya Kenya School of Monetary Studies. <laughs> But we did that on a comedy show. Iko on a serious one. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like how does such a school go <laughs> down? <laughs> uh, they didn't have enough money. They didn't have financial sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, mm-hmm. kuna fikiria hakuna gaio financial literacy because we are never taught about. We are just taught save. Uh, we are taught yes if you're successful, kuwa na gari, gari would depreciate, land would appreciate like a Kenyan economy class na kwa simple land appreciates car depreciates their car that actually appreciate yes? yeah, yeah yeah so you see um so i think it's because of the can i call it the bureaucracy mm. because now you know it's an organized system of learning mm. and for changes to be made in the curriculum there have to be policies that are enacted debated on parliament a lot of changes have to happen mm. a lot of meetings have to happen for a change to to be acted on mm. so before now you start debating about you know we need to introduce financial literacy in our schools yeah yeah who was who the former president who has already, has already finished his term and now the new government now wants to debate other issues mm. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so they throw that back to the cabinet and now they start debating other issues mm. yeah so i think it, it's, it's it's more about our policies most of our government policies because mm. i think there are some countries who are doing very well with their educations and kids are getting quality educations mm. so i think that's 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 the main thing you mm. know our education policy and our curriculum depending more so on our government which is not maybe that serious or is not have not yet seen the importance of maybe introducing financial literacy in schools okay mm. i think we're getting quantity education mm. quantity mm. education mm. not quality just yeah. everything This just stuff. dumped Yeah. You just have your head a lot yeah. of materials but mm. Mm. you don't even know what, which one to use at <laughs> what time mm. Mm. I love nini this is the famous I always credit it to Boniface Mwangi because he's <laughs> the one who tweeted it <laughs> uh, so Boniface Mwangi has this famous saying that you are one illness away from poverty like the average Kenyan is one illness away from poverty so yeah. I also niliona <sighs> ulko miandika jia health insurance mm. so your views on that health insurance Yeah so maybe I can mention I think that's true to start with mm. all all of us most Kenyans we are unless you are maybe in the ultra rich yeah, I think yeah. there, was, there was there was a clip that went viral I don't know which there was a famous pastor mm. who was mm. saying that he used I don't know how many million mm. millions to go abroad for Yeah new new you are uh, JCC Yeah 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 mm-hmm. so unless you are well off maybe like <laughs> I don't know for a billion yeah, yeah he spent, he spent half, a half a billion, billion. Half a billion on Save treatment. his life 
on cancer on cancer treatment ya something of sort yeah yeah so now you can imagine for the average kenyan how will you access half a billion yeah yeah Yeah, so I think we're well, well, a pastor. An average congregant. Yeah. See, it's just huh? a move. It's a pastor. Yeah, up in Kenya. I think we were JCC. JCC. Oh, why didn't he use Kuna. prayer? Kuna. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Kuna. Can you have to me a prayer? I'm in faith. I'm wondering. Like, full one of, the, full yeah. one, one uh-huh. of his prayers. Yeah. See, because... <laughs> so after to me, half a billion, is he still praising God for... Saving him, Amana Sema. Thank you, cong- congregants. Because I'm assuming it's the congregation. No, I said he was lucky because. Uh, okay, I can't remember. I just I think yeah, I just knows, saw it uh, on my uh, timeline. Okay, that's you know, interesting. Yeah, I yeah but I was, I was just trying to, to use that amount for the average yeah. person now yeah, using yeah, using yeah. using half a billion for mm-hmm. treatment. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you look at most people, whenever there's an illness, maybe in the family, mm-hmm. most people resort to harambees and well wishers and pay bills and what have you. Mm-hmm. So we are always one sickness away from yeah. from poverty. And that's why whenever you're talking about building wealth, you have to talk about mm. wealth wealth protection. Yeah. And now wealth growth, maybe wealth creation. Yeah. So now we have to, I think I've talked a lot about wealth creation, you know, yeah. investing in bonds, stocks, money market funds, circles, but I've not talked, talked about more about wealth protection. Mm. So wealth protection is where now health insurance, life insurance comes in. Mm. Yeah. So I think there the, 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 there's a there's a guy there's a friend of mine who used to say that sickness is not an emergency. Mm. Oh. And also death is not an emergency because mm-hmm. it's guaranteed you'll die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. there's also a high probability mm-hmm. that you'll get sick because mm-hmm. okay in a, in a year maybe you'll get sick once yeah, in a month yeah, but okay yeah, maybe the yeah. probability of getting a deadly disease is it's maybe it's much there. lower mm-hmm. but it's still there mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. not an accident. Yeah. There is a probability there's a possibility. Mm-hmm. So now oh, that's where health protection comes in. Things like health insurance are very important because, mm-hmm. you know, medical visa is one thing that can wipe yeah, off yeah, yeah. your investments and your savings in mm-hmm. one day, maybe in a very short period of time. Yeah. So health insurance is something that we always try to advocate for. Mm-hmm. And also, okay, I think health insurance is the most important, the most critical for many people. Mm-hmm. And also nowadays, I think the government has stopped being serious with NHIF. Mm-hmm. They are restructuring, renaming it and a lot mm-hmm. of things. So, so I think... Not even I think it's very important, very vital mm-hmm. for health insurance to mm-hmm. be part and parcel of your of your investment port or your protection portfolio. Mm-hmm. Then also that's that's the that's the for the most for the, for that's for everyone. I think it should be for everyone. Yeah. But now life insurance, if you have dependents, if you have a family, mm-hmm. you know, one day you may be gone and you still you're still thinking, okay, how will my family do yeah. when yeah. I'm gone? Yeah. So life insurance also there to cater for your for your Life insurance and yes, no. on average, let's say someone wants a policy of 10 million, how much will they need to pay per annum? It depends on a lot of factors. I think mm. there are some companies that have very good apps where you can just, or maybe cal- calculators, or just, you can just enter your details, mm. your age, oh, your health status, yeah, all yeah. those things, and you can just calculate. Then mm. the, you can, they, it, can, it can help you to calculate the, the premiums that you have to pay mm. every month. Huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, because... It's sorry, I want illness away. And I think this is also the, the I don't know if I should call it the conundrum, because a lot of people who are creating wealth mm-hmm. end up not having time to take care of their health. So I'm too, you could sit at the whole day because you're creating wealth. Mm-hmm. And then this wealth ends up sending you to the hospital. Because unless you're a fitness, or you're not a fitness, or like he makes his money through fitness. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, it's such yeah. a good way to make your money. Because mm-hmm. you're working you're on your that, health, yeah, yeah. like yes, athletes, mm-hmm. and your financial health, and your financial well, yani kila kitu yeah, at yeah. the same time, yeah, yeah, like, physical and financial health zote. Yeah, uh, that's nini. Other is sisi wengine umeka apo kula. You need to go stretch. Stand up, Kimbia. Stand up, stretch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 of yeah. course. Mm. And then you talked about also ni index index funds. What, what are index funds? I think I've seen you know kitu na nasitisukuliza. Yeah, so when it comes to investing in the stock market, there are two ways yeah. you can invest in the stock market. One is passive investing, mm. the other one is active investing. Mm. So active investing, I so say you're investing in buying individual stocks. So oh. maybe you're buying Safaricom, Equity, mm. BAT, ABL, you're buying an individual stock. Mm. Mm. So you have to do the analysis and, and do your evaluation and say, okay, why, what, what price is, should I buy equity at? Mm. Or maybe why is buying equity a good investment? So you have yeah. to do the analysis, yeah. then you have to keep... Checking whether it's still a viable option to hold on to equity, or maybe why, or maybe you should sell. Mm. Yeah. Then we have passive investing. So passive investing, how you invest in a basket 
mm. of stocks so maybe through what you call index funds or what you call ETFs ETFs are like oh. exchange traded funds yeah, yeah. so now instead of investing in safaricom alone mm. you invest in safaricom ABL Mm. equity kcb so in, so you are spreading a risk mm. and also you are you are you are, you are you're increasing your chances of succeeding in the, the stock market because you know if you pick one stock mm. the probability that it will do well mm. it's pretty low but if you pick maybe five stocks mm. your probability of maybe one of the stocks performing well will be quite high mm. yeah so passive investing that's where now index funds and etfs come in so you cannot what 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 determines the index funds and the etfs is what you call indices mm. so indices track indices single as an index it tracks yeah, the yeah. performance of a certain sector of the, of the mm. stock market mm. so like in Kenya you have the NSC20 the NSC25 they in- recently introduced the NSC10 oh, but in wow. Kenya we don't have index funds and ETFs we only have a gold ETF that mm. tracks the performance of gold e- NSC20 you gonna company NSC20 Safaricom mm. I think I'm not sure I'm, I'm not quite sure the criteria they they mm. used to pick okay. Mm. NSC20 because as long as we are in a safari we can be a safari com huh? nation media group standard media group <laughs> like yeah no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that cancels out everything yeah. safari com has but safari com and some banks that would be really good because i see kenyan but banks it's always it's 20 companies and you know, NSC has 60 60 watts mm. yeah, some delisting some shares that have been suspended and 64 listed companies yeah, yeah. yeah so if you now take 20 and the guys who say that most of the stocks in the NSC are not even investor worth yeah, yeah yeah so i think you'll have some some stocks that you ruin the party mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah but true. we don't have index funds or etfs in Kenya. we only have a gold etf mm. but now maybe if you can give an example of the US stock market mm. we have indices like the s&p 500 the yeah. nasdaq 100 the dow yeah, jones yeah. average so like mm. the s&p 500 tracks the performance of the top 500 US companies mm. so now you have your apple you have your meta you have your tesla you have all these okay, companies amazon apple yeah yeah mm. and and The, the good thing about we call it indexing mm. even guys like Warren Buffett have advised they and they have written and say that the the, the average investor mm. shouldn't concern themselves with picking individual stocks mm. but by investing in a low cost index fund because you know yeah. investing in stocks is hard mm. yeah and even when Jack Bogle who is the founder of who was the first person to come with the idea of index funds in the year 1976 mm. and he was coming up with the idea guys were ridiculing him saying that okay who who wants to invest in an average fund mm. because now when you invest in the top 500 US companies mm. you will get the average of the top 500 yeah. but what if you can get the top you can invest in one company which will be the top performing and get mm. all the returns mm. yeah so guys were like okay who will invest in the in this average and who wants average returns mm. but first for today most investors don't beat a simple index like the S&P 500. Yeah, yeah. I think if there there there's this there's a there's a score I think it's called SPIVA I can't I can't remember what SPIVA stands for on top of my mind but you can maybe check look at look, look it up mm. but uh, it it usually compares how individual investors or be retail investors and how managed funds compare to a basic index maybe mm-hmm. in, in indices that track the performance of various sectors of the stock market and most guys don't beat their benchmark indices maybe A, a basic benchmark like the S&P 500 most people don't beat it in fact mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 90% of investors don't beat such an index so mm-hmm. now that's why it becomes much easier for the average person maybe like you who isn't concerned about following financial markets you yeah, just invest yeah. your money in, a, in an index or an, or an ETF now ukiwa kenya is mm-hmm. there a way to like invest in the S&P 500 or Nasdaq 100 yeah there's a there's a way you can invest without in. trading Like yeah you can you can, you can just you can just okay obviously if, if everyone will have everyone is a trader yeah but now what depends whether you are, you, you, you remain a trader or an investor mm. is how you is this now you are long term and how you are you are taking yeah. your, mm. you are you are, you are how you are going about your trading because if you bought maybe tesla at the morning and then you sold it in the evening mm. maybe you are a trader maybe mm. maybe but some other guys may consider you an investor because maybe mm. okay depending with with your definitions maybe depending with how your your rest of the portfolio is going maybe that was a single trade move for your portfolio yeah. but maybe yeah but there are ways you can invest in such in such in such in such in such asset classes the S&P yeah. 500 and the Nasdaq 100 mm. so maybe what i forgot to mention is you cannot invest in an index directly so yeah. you have to invest now in an index fund or an ETF mm. so index fund just is just a managed okay not a managed it's passively managed like i mentioned it's a passive investment mm. but now it tra- it the the fund firm comes up with a portfolio mm. that tracks the performance mm. of of the underlying 
assets. So if the if this if this and 500 they come up with the portfolio mm. that mirrors the S&P 500 mm. but not invest in them now you have there are some brokers in Kenya that offer such oh, okay. such kind of services okay so it's not just that in Nikita could trade because of course I've seen people trade yeah. Nasdaq and yeah the guys who, tra- who trade yeah, and it's crazy in Arugaga yeah. low profit cash we call reading in a juan yeah but the good, good the good the good thing with indexing okay we always say there's there's a common phrase that the stock market always goes up in the long mm. term yeah okay more so for the developed world our mm. stock market i think we have been in a bear market since 2015 mm. or somewhere there about even the last 18 years have been quite not that good what for stock Kenya. market yeah i think our stock market has peaked it peaked around 2015 16 17 mm. then some counters started dropping then mm. the likes of safaricom equity continued rising until before covid mm. then after covid you've been on a downtrend oh. yeah so maybe mm. it's because maybe our stock market is we are in a, it's a developing economy but the, mm. the, 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 the developed economy will be like the stock market mm. if you look at how their stock market has been forming the last maybe in the, in, maybe in the last 100 years you mm. can always see very good positive trends maybe they'll mm. go maybe maybe in, in a period of 10 years we'll have maybe one one negative return maybe two years where they have negative returns but generally yeah. the stock market is always going up okay. so investing in the long term in such an index mm. it's quite oh, it's good it's, it's good. quite good now really, um what do you want to ask you uh, safaricom size share more than you do you know don't i don't know to, on top of my mind but i think it's around 15 15 eh? yeah. cuz when they when they whatever when they went public it used to be 5 ama has it gone even in the water so okay so safaricom has, i think safaricom hit the all time it's all time high around 24 2020 mm. they about okay i'm not i'm not my, my numbers are not accurate i'm yeah, just yeah, doing yeah, approximations yeah. Just Tuna, Tuna, yeah. Yeah. Mm. so i think it was around 2020 that mm. was the time it hit its all time high i think it was, it was around 45 Oh, yeah, 45. Yeah, 45, Bob. Yeah. yeah. I love season as well. You may drop to? 15, 15, 16, around there. Yeah, so yeah. this is the time to buy it. Um. <laughs> so <laughs> Safaricom, Safaricom can only go up. I'm a million order. Okay, so Safaricom has some, if you will try to analyze Safaricom as a company and mm. a business, there, there are a lot of things that you have that analysts are trying to point out. Mm. One, one, they are saying that maybe M-Pesa reached its peak in Kenya. Mm. That yeah. It's no, it's no longer growing. That, if you look at how Mbesa used to grow in Kenya, maybe for the last 10, 5, mm. maybe the last 10 years, mm. it used to go in double digits. Yeah. But I think the last three years, the growth has stagnated. Mm. Then the other thing, if you look at data, mobile, mm. you know, SMS and all those revenues, mm. Mm. they've also not, they've also kind of stagnated. Yeah, internet yeah. has taken over, like WhatsApp. Yeah, they've calls. also quite stagnated. There's no money to make yeah, phone calls. Though, yeah, though, they were, though even they also have their Safari community, which is also trying to check mm. up some market share mm. then you also have the maybe they, i think they were trying to spur up some growth by investing into ethiopia mm. and initially guys were, were very were very optimistic about ethiopia because if you look at ethiopia they have they're the second most populated country in africa mm. Mm. they never had i think they never had mobile mobile banking yeah so yeah. guys were saying that mpesa was going to be to do very well and safaricom was going to, to do very well in ethiopia yeah but also if you look now what has happened the Safaricom investment guys are trying to say that okay, analysts are trying to say that okay, maybe the investment in Ethiopia mm, may not, not really good. pay off. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so okay. Because yeah. they should have just kept the like monopoly here. Because here they, it's I feel like it's such a monopoly. But uh, like I was complaining, I think at my music or podcasting, it's been over how many? I've had Safaricom home for close to five years. They've never increased the speeds. Speeds me back to the same because Zuku, one of the things I used to love about Zuku is Zuku, mm-hmm. like after a certain period of time, mm-hmm. they tell you for this same amount of whatever to mm-hmm. not these speeds. Mm-hmm. But Sashida Zuku is the speeds became very unstable. Yeah, I have seen a lot of complaints about Zuku and most people have transferred from Zuku. Yeah. So now but a safari com like the speeds used to give me in twenty nineteen, mm-hmm. they're still giving me the same speeds. And now the difference yeah between you speed and the next level is so huge that I have to stick now you place more because the internet is the future i'm thinking like it's it's what's going to help so i don't know maybe they've also run out of ideas on how to grow their internet market because mm-hmm. i feel like the internet market has not even been tapped because yeah. if you are to look at the rural areas mm-hmm. penetration low. but right i think you. but i think that also has some you have you, you also have to bring about smartphone yeah penetration yeah. Mm, rates mm. yeah maybe in the rural areas is not that mm. quite 
maybe the internet demands in the rural area don't have that quite huge mm. demand than in urban areas okay yeah. maybe maybe so, so i think for me safaricom you have to look at a couple of things one is the 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 play in the open how it goes about mm. and also now how they are going to how 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 they, how they are going to maybe spark growth in the country yeah, 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 but I think it's still okay in terms of valuing a company. I, st- I still think it's, it's still very undervalued. Yeah, uh, it's I mm. think it's still undervalued. But now, whether you know, for you to make money in the stock market, mm. your analysis or maybe, or maybe your projections, mm. they, they have to come real. Maybe they have to mm. to manifest. Yeah, in the stock market, or maybe mm. other guys will maybe come to see what you saw maybe a few years later. Mm. But now, if the stock is undervalued, but no one wants it. Mm. Hey <laughs> nene is your charts are there like safaricom charts that someone can analyze and just try and draw your like trend line and what and see maybe a price might bounce at this area instead of just a blind buy is up here go yeah like, there are some guys who do fundamental analysis but now mm. the are uh, not fundamental but technical technical, yeah. te- technical analysis mm. but now the issue with our Kenyan markets that okay the best tools mm. like maybe google finance yahoo finance maybe other other tools that you know you can use for other developed markets yeah most most companies don't track performance of the Kenyan markets mm. so mm. even getting data about the Kenyan market sometimes is quite hard mm. yeah so there are tools out here but you are limited mm. yeah because okay okay yeah but uh buddha asante sana mekoni so 259 yeah you make like a master class i always tell yeah. people like he mm. show to ongea kuhusu kila kitu Ya natakuja kuambia vile ame open only fans. <laughs> Now he's struggling with directions. <laughs> <laughs> only fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last time ngine tuna go deep to na bogat your finances. Uh, yeah. Financial health is really important. Mm-hmm. Uh is second I, I'd say it's only second to physical health. Yeah, yeah. So it's something that you need to look at. Uh mm-hmm. usijidanganye pesa haina aina maana unajua watu jidanganya hivyo <laughs> eh yeah, like at yo money can't buy happiness nani yeah. alikuambia floyd, floyd says money is not everything it's the only thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's <'Cause>, true kuna yeah. siku <laughs> kuna hiyo hata nini i had this i don't know how true am um, uh, if you think this is true <laughs> but i had that how kids are raised in different levels of wealth <laughs> uh, affects their relationship with money So a kid who's born in the ghetto for example uh-huh. will always hear their mother or my father complain about money uh-huh. and they end up associating money with all these negative things because money in elitaga like all the arguments ni juu ya do nene 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 and then a kid who's born is side ngine anaona got to just the positives na kuambiwa like eh unajua pesa ni hivi you can invest you can save this you can like they hear the positive stories mm. and later in life the attitude towards money is more autapata mtu wa mdosi akikwambia vitu za ujinga ka is like as long as i'm happy <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you think that's true your your theory that wherever you are born can influence your relationship na pesa yeah i think that the biggest influence with your money habits mm. your money personality your money mindset it's how you're brought up yeah so yeah. that's 100% true mm. yeah Eh pesa ni nzuri bana pesa itakutafutia vitu hapa nje. <laughs> eh hey, itakutafutia mm. yani unajua hiyo au samaga kila mtu iko na their their like bullshit expenses where they need a sinking fund. Where sinking fund yako? What do you spend on that you always like? Why the hell did I spend this? Yes. <laughs> so that cautious with money. Eh hey, like what <laughs> your work. What do you spend on for sinking fund? Mata kunianika. Yes yes. Because I don't know you must leave. Yeah, mo bia watu na matizi ni bia watu that I yeah. yeah. <laughs> I sinem bia watu I spent on an OLED TV. <laughs> Then mm-hmm. ikona mtu ameenda kupale kwa comments akamwambia ah you have that in your shamba <laughs> <laughs> that was from your drowning fund yeah yeah, yeah that was from my nini <laughs> so you have, you have a drowning fund yeah <laughs> <laughs> so there's a singing fund or a drowning fund yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like where you waste money i think, I think, yeah. I think that's, that a, that's a that's a very exciting exciting <laughs> name a drowning fund where my yeah wale unaeka hapo na black hole yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh-huh. so so mtu alini enjoy hivyo but sasa The only mm-hmm. difference is I remember nikionele comment yako enjoy your money. Mm-hmm. Now the only difference is I enjoy this TV. Like uh, uh, apart from any uh, podcasting or I'm a uh, mupend electronics eh? mm-hmm. so I'm a one of those people na kunga who was I talking to kuna mtu uko naongea naye nikasikia sema ah naona gato kuna headphones these are 20k. Nikap 
Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Buddha <laughs> <laughs> so, who, was that? who was that? Remember, we were around someone who said that. And uh, so everyone has something that makes them enjoy. So Mimi Waga. No, like, like when he, your, 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 your stylist. Oh, my hair stylist. Yes, she was yeah. the one who was talking about that. Mm. I'm going to be a little key. This is what. So, me, it's electronics. I spent mm. a lot on electronics. And every time I discover an electronic that's superior to another, mm-hmm. If I feel that it brings value, I spend on it. So like kama sasa hizi unakunga, e mic we were not worried about you but when we move this one we can hear some noises. So tuna try to change hii hii kwa kama hii una check it. So kuna hiyo but hiyo ni business. Mm. But now outside business that electronics thing, the electronics bag hiyo ni fuata. Like kuna time mwangalia gani nini hivi natoka na log off. Nikienda <laughs> Amazon yone offers on headphones I'm like this is bullshit. <laughs> I, I need to log off. Now and then nikimweka decision I'm not supposed to make. Yeah. So yeah. you're thinking fund work on nini? So what for, do you spend on that? You feel like what makes you enjoy your money because I think that's now the enjoying your money part. Yeah, so for me I think I'm a, I'm a very physical okay enjoy outdoor activities oh okay so okay. one of the things that i enjoy cycling mm. oh, uh, mm. so i think i spend a lot of money on cycling oh me na bikes na kununua bike like and bike yeah. and okay. yeah. so bike yako si za 90 is in za shona gele i've seen a, someone on uh, any reels instagram reels mm. mtu ana ride bike alafu ana ruka hivi akirudi hivi kiti imetoka Oh. Alafu wana weka kale kama kika. Oh. Okay. So great bike. Um I always yeah. feel like it's such a dangerous uh hobby, yama. Yeah, it's a very okay, I can't say it's, it's like it's second to motorcycle. <laughs> no, it's not. It's slower, but it's it's, fair. it's I think it's I think it's a different sport to mm. motorcycle because now cycling are the engine. Mm. And and also your speeds are quite yeah they are limited but you your, your body to, yeah you are the body you are mm, yeah mm, mm. but i think it's a very enjoyable sport okay. and, and it keeps you fit it keeps you fit and also yeah, i think yeah. the cycling community mm. it's quite i think it's one of the best communities that i've joined oh, okay. okay yeah kuna mm. hapo spring valley sio naenda wapi i think even any used to be i don't know kama liko na eh but he used to he's one of the most famous what work cycling out of kenya mado Larry. Larry. Yeah. Mm. Kwa hiyo kuna time Larry was like before and uh, big places yeah. like in uh-huh. CNN. Uh-huh. He used to cycle like I think every weekend. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, so, ina kokome eh? yeah, So mm. so mm. so see no all our weekends to go cycling. Mm. Uh, there's, there's, there's another day so there's, there's a guy Jack Zero. Mm. He's mm. also a member of a cycling community. I think he did a tour from Nairobi to Lodwa and guys mm. are amazed at, at like Ah, this guy used a bike to go to those places. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that day he, u- he used a bike to go from Nairobi to Kisi. Guys are like, this guy mm. used a bike to go to this place. I'm like, this mm. is normal in a cycling community. But now because <laughs> guys don't know. Mm. I think the, the first time I went, I cycled home mm. from Nairobi. To? My, my, par- to Nyeri. my parents oh. were like, yeah. huh? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Five, six hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn, what's the distance? <laughs> yeah. The like distance, two, the distance two? from my Upper place two? to home it's I think around 120 kilometers. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So so also ni 20 km per hour. Like you ni ukishika kuna place zilo na shikilia tu ni gravity sasa. Okay, the stretch between Nairobi uh, between the carot to Nyeri. 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 Nyeri to Mukoroine, Mukoroine. Okay. Yeah. Mimi alasai kujua ni ni hizo long distance muzi ogopa especially kayo route ya Nyeri ndayogopa juzi ni Nyeri. Kosi si pia nini Meru and Nyeri si at some point makutano makutano. Sina patano sio makutano ya. Eh toa si wa Mira vile old drive ni kama <laughs> so ki ride your time huko huko are you on the actual tarmac kama huko. Yeah you're on the actual tarmac. That's your tarmac. It's um if yeah, from Nairobi, Nairobi it's 117 yeah you are Hanland 117 km. imani na watu. 100 eh. Sema tu 120. Na kuna place uliendo kashika track. Lori. Yeah. I think one of the best one of the most okay I'm an adrenaline junkie. One of the yeah. best interesting places to cycle mm. in Akonga my mahi escarpment. Eh hey, oh. Mm. So mm. you come na hiyo mahi ukienda, mahi escarpment. Mm. Yeah. It's a oh, very it's a, it's a very narrow it's a mm. very narrow section of the road. Mm. Alafu mo, like 90% of the vehicles are on trucks. Yeah, yeah najua, najua hiyo njia. Alafu ukishuka when you are maybe ukishuka 
there's traffic ya truck mm. zikishuka but mm. kupanda the traffic is moving mm. so it's always it's always a, a game between cyclists and, and truck drivers it's one of the most enjoyable things it's crazy because there's, <laughs> there's there's, there's, there's a lot of risk <laughs> there so the, 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 upon the, the The, the line between life and death is there. I normally even close my eyes. I pretend I'm asleep. That's mm. how much I like. I have, I've told people I have an unreasonable fear of heights. Eh? Mm-hmm. So the fact I'm going to go to the house. But you know, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the CG. Yeah, kuna njia so uko chini ya suswa. Mm. Me that's what I'm planning to be using. Hauta nipata huko juu. Mm. Nitakuwa nikienda ngong, huko napitia naenda. Mm. Me there's this stretch mm. from uh, nini? The Peponi Road. Eh? Mm. Uh kwa hapo Oilibia uh, down to place inaitwa Peponi Springs. Mm. Inakuanga ni road ni naro hivi. Mm. And then kuna kiditch kibigi. Mm. Uh, mnaona sasa ina tram call the way to Mali tumeboda na Karura Forest. You go every time to go up because mm. isa dingine when you are coming from town kuna nini there's a barrier kuna land na nini but if you are going towards town hakuna anything. Hata leo niko naangalia there's no fence there's nothing. If anything happens if me, anything happens ni Yesu street. Yeah, Joe. Yeah. Hizo sasa mina mimi kaulizwa tushuke hapo mali anasema tutembee alafu ni pale mat pale mbele ikae good mimi sio joga vile you need to at the the low language uses uh, sounds like gets the name from what's happening so mm-hmm. kutetemeka na kijaka ni kutetni mm-hmm. mimi hapo naweza tetni mbaya tu naweza kwa like if you just ask me to walk wacha ku cycle which i feel is uh, more unstable <laughs> than walking <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd be super scared but hey yeah. ni enjoy your money man mm. so, at the end of the day what so makes you, you happy so you the zip line nah niliona siju kuna place ka colombia ule usha na video there's a video siju colombia nazolanga kwa kwa nini nazolanga eh nazolanga watu wanafunga waya unafungwa unaingizwa kamba inakushikilia rasa alafu unapata kwa kitu kushikilia alafu na teremka and they do it you see mm. old women doing it because i think maybe you start doing it as a very young person yeah. so by the time you are older hiyo yeah. nini imekuwa kiwa there's yeah. a prank i saw and like this was one of the worst pranks mm. it was bungee jumping Yeah. Then na ruka alafu ni ni elastic rope or something. Mm. So ni msi ana ruka alafu beshti yake na mchezea prank like they forgot to tie him. So anamrushia rope vile mm. ameruka. Mm. <laughs> Lakini prank. <laughs> yeah. Like you aren't tied. Because <laughs> yeah. it messes with your mind. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, okay. Yeah. So eh yeah, tuko na wow. fagosha mada. Okay. 259 so bila tumesema jo enjoy your money jo pesa ni yako mm. si sikuwe hapa una nini alafu wache pesa yote kwa bank account yeah. uh, next of kin ota you waste <laughs> <laughs> so make sure at least me balance kila kitu actually kwa hiyo point enjoy your money there's a very interesting book in it's called die with zero yeah yeah must get your title die with zero oh die with zero mm. <laughs> the other makes a very the other is called bill parkins it makes a very interesting point i think it's one of the most it's one of the non conventional books about personal finance that i've ever read yeah, yeah. It, it goes against the, the rule. conventional the rule mm. so and as among that if you die with even a single shilling to your name mm. you have wasted you have wasted the amount of time you 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 invested earning that one shilling yeah uh-huh. so like you should make sure you you maximize or maybe utilize mm. much of what you earn mm-hmm. not dying with billions of money yeah. with in your name okay what he tries to say is that those, those that, that's money that, that you are dying with mm. is fun memories that you should maybe have invested maybe that you have enjoyed mm. so in any person in most personal finance classes or maybe whenever you're talking about personal finance yeah you'll hardly like hear someone telling that you can enjoy your money It's yeah, all about yeah, saving, so. saving aggressively. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you are as long as unajua umeachia family aka kitu kidogo uh-huh. enjoy do yako. Alafu pia I think the other thing ile I think we mean with that is if you can get something you can afford and this thing is going to make you happy. Yeah yeah yeah. And the fact that it makes you happy it puts you in a good mental space. Yeah. Then spend on it. Unajua. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. cuz uh, we are I used to complain. I used to have a, a certain TCLT. I used to complain about it so much. <laughs> Nowadays I actually nikiwa free I look for movies to watch mm. 
poleni when i'm watching a movie na hiyo na kuaga like damn yani kitu inakaaga hivi haiko inakaa bila kufikiria so yeah, i enjoy that and then it pushes me na kuanga like oh shit this thing was expensive i need to work i go back to work <laughs> yeah, 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 i take it so yeah. enjoy your money so eh uh, steve oto we fry sana da uh, nani kikuta Steve si manishi simple boy <laughs> but <laughs> mfraya sana um mm. na niko sure so ingia we get their 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 lessons uh kwa kwa diaspora umecheki jo kwenyu it's even easier than kwetu sindio yeah. like investing and what but rather up up kenya start today man it's all about starting let 2024 be the year that at least you start working on your financial health sindio yeah yes yeah, yeah. so imekuwa um oh wasio kikutaka tumesema twitter twitter is the easiest sindio yeah I'm most active on twitter uh, twitter is the easiest place kumpata mimi bado na fuatili ya threads zako so endelea kufanya hivyo unafanya size zingine na kachini kwa like damn this is good i need to do this cuz of yeah, yeah so yeah so like subscribe hit the notification button tell a friend to tell a friend tukimalizia 259 tukisema eko nene eko nene